Buffalo football. Live from Lewis Field in Stillwater, it's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the Oklahoma State University Cowboys. Today's game is brought to you by Coors Extra Gold, by Pizza Hut, and by Rider Rangers. Hi, everybody. I'm Les Shapiro along with Jim Ryan filling in for Coach Dave Logan. We're here for CU in Oklahoma State. And, Jim, the question everybody's asking, how well will CU rebound considering the loss to Nebraska last week and the fact that CU is probably out of the Big 8 title chase Yeah, right I think now. they are out of the Big 8, and they've had three very emotional games in a row. A lot of people might think they're going to come out very flat. That's one scenario. I think more likely a big burden has been lifted. A lot of pressure is off right now. I think they're going to come out very relaxed, probably play very well, just play for the fun of playing football, really. If CU is going to rebound today, they're going to have to do it against a pretty good Oklahoma State defense. A defense ranked second in the Big 8. They're very good, very quick. Not especially big, but they have very active linebackers like Keith Burns and Richie Ainsley. They'll be very active in stopping that run uh, for, for Colorado. We also have Mark McIntosh with us on the sidelines, and we'll be going down to him periodically for reports from the field. Well, in Stillwater, Oklahoma today, the temperature is 39 degrees. Humidity is about 30 percent. We have a wind out of the northwest at 9 miles per hour. It is sunny. However, it is very chilly down on that AstroTurf. Series record between these two teams. CU leads it, having won 19 of 35 games in a series that started back in 1920. And CU has won the last four games against OSU. CU won the coin toss and deferred to Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State decided to receive the opening kickoff, so CU will be teeing it up. Mitch Berger right there wearing a heavily taped right hand. He broke a thumb, and that will, that will be tough for him in punting situations, catching the snap. Kicking off, no problem. Back to receive the kickoff, Rafael Denson and Shannon Culver. And this is Culver from his own one-yard line. An opening on the right side. He can't quite turn the corner, however. And is put down at the 16-yard line. The Oklahoma State offense led by the senior quarterback, Andy Loveland. David Thompson, the man there in the white lettering, is a freshman tailback and a very impressive one. He leads this offense. The offensive line for the Cowboys, Joes, Guillory, Hall is the center, Orts and Butler. Hall filling in for Brian Hope, who is out with a broken right hand. From the 16-yard line, Oklahoma State, the first drive of the ballgame. This is the freshman, Thompson, and he gets a couple of yards. The CU defense led by linebacker Sam Rogers, who's really stepped it up the last couple of weeks. And the defensive secondary, Dalton Simmons, Collier Dwayne Davis, and the All-American candidate at free safety, Chris Hudson, the All-Big 8 free safety last year. There's a shot of Andy Loveland, who wasn't supposed to be quarterbacking this team, but through the course of the season, the Cowboys have lost Tony Jones to a separated shoulder, and Gary Porter to suspension. So Loveland, third on the depth chart, now leading this OSU offense. It's second and seven. The pass is complete to the tight end, Derek Jones, and he's close to the first down. Looks like he has it, Jimmy. Yeah, they've started to go to Derek Jones a lot more. He only had six catches prior to last week, but played very well against KU. You see Loveland drop back, and just a little delay by Jones, and the CU defense looks like they're in a zone, and they just come up and make the tackle, but not before Jones gets the first down. Speaking of last week, you know about the CU loss to Nebraska, 21-17 in Boulder. And OSU is coming off of a loss to Kansas, 13-6, right here in Stillwater. Loveland on the keeper, might have gotten a yard. I don't think he wanted to keep that ball. Busted play? Yeah, I think it was. I think he wanted to toss that ball. You're not going to see Andy Loveland doing a lot of uh, fancy footwork, running a lot of option or anything like that. He's a, a really heady guy. You know, he makes intelligence decisions in that. But as Pat Jones, a coach for Oklahoma State, has said, not necessarily as gifted as his other quarterbacks athletically. They call him the old man of this team. He's a fifth-year senior, and a lot of the guys refer to him as George Blanda. <laughs> That's really old. The guy who played into his 40s in the NFL. That pass went deep and incomplete. Let's go down to the sidelines now and hear for the first time from Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. Oklahoma State, you think 
has to get off to a good start. So far this year, the Cowboys really struggling scoring-wise after halftime. Oklahoma State has not scored a point all year in the fourth quarter. The Cowboys have only scored 24 points in the third quarter. So Oklahoma State has got to get out to a good start today against CU, although they'll probably struggle. Back up to you. Thanks, Mark. So you jump on the Cowboys quickly. It's tough for them to come back. And also, you don't have to worry about the crowd today if you're the visiting team because the crowd is not very big. A lot of these people have given up on the Cowboys since they went on probation in 1989. Flags fly as Loveland goes back to pass. That's Darius Holland on his back. And I believe a CU player jumped offside. Yeah, I think they're going to get Ronnie Wolfork playing the left side at outside linebacker, and he just jumped before the snap of the ball. But you see Holland there. Nice play as he came in and made the sack. That's exactly what it is. So five yards will be marched off against the Buffs. CU coming in here with a 4-3-1 and one record in conference 2-1-1. One, and one, The loss to Nebraska and the tie against Kansas State. Oklahoma State comes in with a four-game losing streak. The Cowboys are 0-4 in conference. All together, 3-5. And, and there you saw the two coaches, Pat Jones for OSU, and right here, Bill McCartney, the winningest coach in CU football history. It's third and four for OSU. They'll try the middle. That's Joe Jefferson. He is short of the first down, and that will bring up the first punting situation of the afternoon. Oklahoma State really known as tailback U, but with that man, Joe Jefferson, number 20, who tried to get the first down there, he was stopped before he picked it up. They've been giving the ball quite a bit more to their fullback. Scott Tyner, one of the better punters in the country, let alone the Big 8, averaging 44 yards a kick. And back to receive the punt is Chris Hudson, who is averaging a very nice 15 yards per return. Tyner gets it off with a little pressure. It's a nice kick. Hudson from his own 17. He's dancing, but he's not going to get anywhere. <laughs> Scott Harmon makes the tackle on the kickoff. Leading the CU offense this week, and he's hoping for a better game than he had against Nebraska. Quarterback Cordell Stewart, the 6'3", 210-pound junior. The running backs, led by Rashawn Salam, who had 165 yards, his career best against Nebraska. And the offensive line, led by the left tackle, Tony Birdie, who is having an All-American type season. Cordell Stewart, he went 8 for 28 against Nebraska. Let's see how well he reacts to a oh my tough goodness. game. Rashawn Salam fumbles the ball after being thrown for a loss. I believe they're going to call him down and say that the turf caused the fumble, which makes it a non-fumble. Tyler Williams made the tackle. Again, the quickness of the uh, Oklahoma State front four and their front seven, really, is they are not really especially big up front, but... Here is the defense, defense led yeah. by linebacker Keith Burns, who Bill McCartney feels will be a first-round draft choice in the NFL. And the DBs led by Scott Harmon, one of OSU's all-time interception leaders. Stewart on second and 15 is complete to Charles Johnson. They get some of that yardage back after the initial loss. Delvin Miles on the coverage. Here you see uh, Charles Johnson just going to run a simple hook pattern, and the tight end had hooked in front of the linebacker and occupied him, and that just opened up the passing lane for Charles Johnson and makes a nice gain and really got back a lot of the yardage they had lost on that first down play, and Colorado's favorite down is second down. There are Cordell's numbers from last week. The three interceptions... Were more interceptions that he had thrown all year previous to that game. He had two going into the Nebraska game, three against the Cornhuskers. Cordell Stewart on the option goes nowhere. Charles Werner the tackle. Let's go down to the sideline and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Les. You talked about Mitch Berger before the ball game. All he has on that right thumb is a little tape. I was talking to him before the game. He said it is still very painful just to the touch. It is very painful. So that might cause him some trouble today catching that snap from center. Back up to you. That's a good point. We watched mm -hmm. him in practice taking the snap with his left hand and transferring the ball to his right. He also has trouble dropping the ball down to his foot because of the broken thumb. 
Looked okay there taking the snap. Gets off a low kick. It's taken at the 26-yard line by Harmon. And he has run out of bounds at the 38. We're early in the first quarter. 9.52 to go. The score is 0-0. CU and OSU. One Friday night after work, uh, one of our course drivers ran into these bud sales guys. And after getting his chops busted for a little while over this claim that bud drinkers prefer an extra gold, he said, guys, here's the time and the place. You tell me. The first salesman picked extra gold. The second one, I can't oh! Third one, right for the extra goal. And of course, their supervisor wanted nothing to do with this anyway. You don't have to be a bud driver to know what's better. Coors Extra Gold, get back to real beer. We thought really that that was the proof of the pudding. For months now, reports of the legendary two-footed object have been growing. Anything? Nothing. It must be big. Even check, see the... Coming over the hill, sorry. Hit the lights, boys! Bigfoot. Bigfoot Pizza, the legendary value from Pizza Hut. With two square feet and a tasty new crust you can't get anywhere else. Or for $10.99. Okay, folks, let's break it up. Ah! Bigfoot Pizza, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. How can you ride the bus for free? Relax on your way to work. And improve the air. Ask your company to provide EcoPass. EcoPass is RTD's reduced price annual bus pass that companies buy for their employees. With it, Ride Arrangers provides a guaranteed free taxi ride home in case of an emergency. Call this number for details about EcoPass. And the guaranteed ride home. Brought to you by RTD, Ride Arrangers, and News 4. We're at Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Les Shapiro along with Jim Ryan, the former Denver Broncos linebacker, doing the color for our game today in place of Dave Logan. Right now, Oklahoma State with the ball after the CU punt. And the handoff goes to the freshman, David Thompson. Looks like he might have even lost a yard. Ronnie Woolfork makes the tackle. Ronnie Woolfork has been struggling a little bit in the last few games. As a matter of fact, over the last three games, there's a total of only about seven tackles. He had none against Nebraska. But uh, there he makes a good play as he uh, dips underneath the blocker and makes a, actually a tackle for a loss. It was a loss of one that brings up second and 11 for the Cowboys. <laughs> Loveland with time. The ball is tipped and incomplete. Pass is tipped or is incomplete. Looks like Ted Johnson, the CU inside linebacker, might have got a hand on that. Oklahoma State is, is really, frankly, a, a poor offense. They're ranked 97th out of the 106 Division I teams. The Cowboys are averaging just 18 points a game. Mm -hmm. Only 280 yards total and only 136 through the air. They're not that bad a rushing defense with a couple of very young backs. Rushing offense. What is it rushing defense? We knew it. Yeah. Third and 11. Referee blowing his whistle. Our referee today is Terry Turlington. Timeout, Colorado. Colorado. That's the first timeout burned by the Buffs. You get three a half. Well, CU in the polls is ranked 23rd this week after the Nebraska loss. They fall four spots. Buffs are in the AP poll for a school record 77 weeks in a row. And Oklahoma State hasn't been in the poll since the 1988 season when Barry Sanders led the Cowboys to a 10 and 2 record. The next year, Oklahoma State went on NCAA probation and frankly went right into the tank. They haven't had a winning record since. They've had a tough time recruiting since that probation. They were really hit hard by a lot of sanctions. Uh, a lot of uh, the recruiting violations, they weren't allowed on TV, no bowl games, but uh, they were really limited in their visits as far as recruiting goes, and they were limited in scholarships. And Pat Jones has had to try to rebuild this team through a lot of junior college players, and that's very difficult to do. There's little continuity when you're just getting uh, junior college players here for two years. We've got 9.06 to go, first quarter. No score. It's third and 11 for Oklahoma State. The play action. Loveland overthrows the intended receiver, Rafael Denson. And once again, OSU will have to punt. 
Nice play in the defensive backfield by Colorado. Kind of a maligned backfield a little bit this year as they've been burned a few games. Uh, you know, a few come to mind, Miami and Stanford especially, that uh, they've given up a lot of passing yardage, some big plays. They've really come on the last two or three games. Chris Hudson to receive the punt. You talked to Greg Brown, the defensive secondary coach, right before the game. What did he have to say about the problems this year? Well, he's put them in some situations where maybe he shouldn't have, and they've been trying too hard to make some big plays. That's trouble right there. Chris Hudson falls on the muffed punt at the 25-yard line. We'll keep it right here as the CU offense comes on the field. He really seemed beleaguered as you were getting onto the elevator. Yeah. He's taken a lot of shots this year. Yeah, he really has. But, uh, you know, there's there's players that uh, he, he says one of the things they're really lacking on their defense is leadership. They don't have a Greg Beaker type. They have a lot of young guys, and they just need some guys to, to really step up and be leaders on that defense. Right now, the Buffs are on offense, averaging 30 points a game, looking for their first points of the afternoon right here. Rashawn Salam once again caught in the backfield. He's carried the ball twice and twice. He's been thrown for a loss. Eric Hobbs, the middle linebacker, stops him there. Eric Hobbs is going to come and he's going to beat Heath Irwin, the guard. Number 63 is trying to block him, but a nice defensive effort by Eric Hobbs. And he's a, actually a backup linebacker. They go pretty deep as Eric Hobbs just slips with that shoulder, slips the block of Heath Irwin, is able to make the tackle for a loss. Well, if Salam does have trouble today, Lamont Warren is available. He didn't play much last week against Nebraska because of an ankle injury. This is Salam once again, tries the middle, gets a couple yards out of it. Charles Werner, the free safety making the tackle. Let's go down to the sidelines again to Mark. Yeah, Les, uh, commenting on Lamont Warren, I talked to Ben Gregory, the running backs coach. Lamont will be part of the regular rotation. You know, he's had that bad ankle, as you talked about. But he will be in the next series or so. They'll try to give him his series today to see how that ankle holds up. But Rashawn Salam today is the starter. Back up to you. Guys. The Buffs with two wideouts on third and 11. Cordell caught from behind by Javon Langford, the big defensive end. Hmm. That brings up fourth down. We talk a lot about the quickness of the defensive line, and you're going to see him come from the left side. He just beats Derek West, beats a couple of us. But really, this is a covered sack. Well, uh, Cordell Stewart had enough time to get that ball off, but he wanted the tight end down the middle. He was covered. That bought Lankford, who is a true freshman, enough time to make the play. And you might notice he's only 220 pounds. They don't yeah. have a defensive lineman that weighs more than 250. A very, very small defensive line, even for college. That punt by Berger almost blocked by a couple of Cowboys. Harmon lets it bounce, and he recovers at the 40-yard line. So Oklahoma State with the ball will take a break. 6.50 to go, first quarter. Oh, man. Yeah. It's your swing. Yeah. Hey, how'd you swing the Grand Prix? I thought you were getting the Taurus. Well, that was before I checked out the Grand Prix. Oh. Fact is, Grand Prix is the most affordable midsize sedan with a V6, anti-lock brakes, and dual airbags. Really? With the Pontiac three-year smart truck, it's only $239 a month. Wow. I wish I could drive like that. Get a Grand Prix. Best fried clams in the city and 36 taps. No one sells more draft beer in New York than I do. So when they came to me with Coors Extra Gold, they said, well, what do I need another beer for? Couldn't believe it. Now the bartenders can't pour it fast enough. It, it seems to just take off. It's amazing. Who'd, who'd have thought? You know what? I, I think Coors Extra Gold is the best premium beer in the country, without a doubt. You don't have to run a bar to know a good beer. Coors Extra Gold. Get back to real beer. I think it's about the best thing we ever did. First, he tried his luck with a white zonk. Then, a woolly bugger. He followed that with a teeny weeny weeny hawker and a yellow marabou muddler. But when the day was over, Paul had no luck and no dinner. So he stopped to buy dinner and a lotto quick pick. And this time, the big one didn't get away. Which has now given him plenty of time to try a silver doctor, a woolly worm, a grizzly. See you in Oklahoma State. We're back at Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. 
Capacity here, 50,614. I would say about half the seats are filled. They have not been drawing well at Oklahoma State. First play from scrimmage. Joe Jefferson gets a couple of yards. Sam Rogers makes the tackle. Well, Sam Rogers, after the last couple of three weeks, has to be considered for some postseason honors in the Big Eight, if not nationally. He's really been playing well. I think he burst onto the scene against Texas. He was all over the field, had a, an outstanding day, opening uh, game of the season. Sam Rogers has continued to improve, and I'm impressed with his speed. Second and six for the Cowboys at their own 44. Pitch to Thompson. Boy, he's quick getting around that corner and gets it up to the 48-yard line. Again, a four. We'll look at Thompson from the end zone and watch the quickness. They're just in an eye formation, going to do a little toss. It's kind of a sweep to the right, but right there it gets inside of Rodgers and then outside of Kerry Hicks, and that's just a, a great individual effort as far as just quickness on David Thompson. You see, not a very big man, 5'9", 175, but good quicks. And from one of our favorite towns, Okmulgee, Oklahoma. <laughs> he was an all-state running back here, which is no small thing. Oh, well, that time, Thompson went nowhere. Maybe even a loss of a yard. That'll bring up fourth and about three. And once again, OSU will punt. We've had a lot of three and outs here today. Yeah. We have one first down so far in this quarter. Neither team has crossed midfield. <laughs> Scott Tyner out of Edgewood, Texas to punt. And Chris Hudson to return it. This is a short one. Hudson touches it. Not a very smart move, but the Buffs have recovered. That's the second time Hudson has muffed a punt. And the second time the Buffs have, able, have been able to recover it. There's been, there was two different officials calling Oklahoma State's ball, but now they say it is Colorado's ball. He needs to let this ball yeah, bounce. Yeah, he's got to let it bounce. This is not a smart play by Chris Hudson, and he's experienced back there. You wouldn't think that he would make a mistake like that, but he made the effort to make the catch and realized he couldn't, so you just got to get out of the way. It looks like Sam Rogers comes in and makes the recovery and bails out his friend Chris Hudson. I think Ozzy Smith would have had trouble with that short hop. This is Rashawn Salam. Six yards on the carry. Colorado needs to do something right now to get a little spark, a little something going. 437 and running in the first quarter. And they give it to this man. That's a way to get things going. Get some pretty good blocking. Makes a nice inside move on Burner there. Nice six, seven yard gain. And Colorado gets into their offense by making nice gains on first and second down. Second down especially is their big down. They average over seven yards per play on second down. Rashawn leading the big eight, averaging 94 yards a game. Flags fly. Flags fly prior to the snap. This is going to be an illegal procedure on Colorado. You're absolutely right. Why is it that UX players automatically know what the penalty is? Logan does this to me every time. <laughs> he knows before the officials know what the penalty is. Well, sometimes you just see what happens out there. And it, I don't, not even sure why I called that illegal procedure. It looked like the ball was snapped and no one else moved, but no one else has to move. Cordell on second and nine. The pass complete to Charles Johnson for first down yardage. Delvin Miles on the coverage. CJ leads the big eight coming in with 41 catches, averaging five catches a game. That figure also leads the big eight. Makes a lot of catches because they have a lot of nice timing routes like this one. This is not an easy throw as Cordell, just a little half roll to his left. And then Charles Johnson had made the cut right in front of Miles there, Delvin Miles, and made the reception. But good execution because it's good timing on CU's part and good execution by Cordell by making the throw because he has been struggling throwing the ball into the ground, throwing the ball low. Talk to a number of NFL scouts who believe CJ right now would be ranked higher than Michael Westbrook if the draft were tomorrow. On first down, Stewart rolls out, decides to keep it himself because there was good coverage in the Cowboys' backfield. And he squirms out with a couple of yards. He wanted Westbrook on the sideline, but as you mentioned, Les, it was good coverage there, and he couldn't go to him, and 
Therefore, he had to just make what he could out of the play. Some other scores from around the Big 8 today. I was wondering if Kansas State might have a little letdown after their emotional win over Oklahoma. They tie Colorado. Florida State not blowing out Maryland as everybody thought they would. Although still with a comfortable lead. A lot of pressure. Intercepted by Oklahoma State. It's picked off by Charles Werner. His fourth interception of the year for the Cowboys. I think Oklahoma State just comes up the middle with a couple linebackers blitzing. Both Burns and Ainsley are going to come after him. Burns misses him. Ainsley's going to try to get him. And then Cordell, I don't know where he's throwing this football, but he didn't have any receivers. All he had was offensive linemen in the area. And he throws the pick. So not a good decision by Cordell. Oklahoma State for the first time today in CU territory after the Cordell Stewart interception. A great pickup by the tailback, Daryl Boogie Johnson. Good night. Wes, you and I could have gone through this hole. Look, it's a little counter as Spatz makes a block on the linebacker, and then Rogers held, and so was Dennis Collier. A couple holding on, on the, uh, on the play, but Boogie Johnson does the rest. Gets all the way down inside the 10-yard line. But see the hold on Dennis Collier? I don't know if it really mattered because the hole was so big. There was just a lot of green turf for Boogie Johnson to negotiate, and he did it well all the way inside the 10. Johnson is a freshman redshirt out of West Virginia. This is Roger Franks, who doubles as a tight end and fullback. He gets a couple up the middle. This is a scenario that CU did not want to get itself into. We talked about how would they come out after a couple of very emotional games. The loss to Nebraska just a week ago. And you have to say that with 2.30 to go in the first quarter, they have not a quitted themselves very well. Looks like they are a little flat. New quarterback in the game for the Cowboys. This is Mark Wilson. He runs the option. They'll say he's down right before he got to the goal line. It's not a touchdown, but they're awfully close. They're at the one. Mark Wilson out of Upland, California. He's a junior. Well, he certainly has more foot speed than Andy Loveland. He's just going to go and look at the block that Roger Franks flew put on Ronnie Woolfork. Ronnie Woolfork was put on his back by the fullback, and that's what made that play go down to the one-yard line. I don't recall seeing the starting quarterback, Andy Loveland, hurt. You wonder why they put Mark Wilson in. You wonder if they're just trying to change up on CU to keep him off balance. Third and goal from the one. Joe Jefferson. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Joe Jefferson is going to be the fullback. We mentioned he, they're giving the ball to the fullback, and here he is in a goal-to-go situation, and he gets hit. Well, you don't see it there in that replay, but he gets hit right about the one-half-yard line, but is able to keep his feet and keep some balance and fall in for the touchdown. He's a junior college transfer. Right there, Lawson Vaughn with the extra point, and Oklahoma State, with a minute 39 to go in the first quarter, jumps out to a 7 nothing lead. You know, I love it when my wife's out of town. You see, we both work and share the job of bringing up the kids. But when she's gone, I'm not only a father, I'm a... Mom! A mom. Now I've got twice as much to do. I've got to make the best use of my time. At least I've got help from U.S. Web, like voice messages. Message and when I'm on the road, I use my cellular phone. Ryan threw my shoe out the window. Yeah, I hear you're having a half-off shoe sale. Can I buy a half a pair? And I don't want to miss important calls, so I have a U.S. West additional line. Hello? Hi, hi son. A concert Saturday? Yeah, a Cajun stir-fried meatball. That sounds like what I'm making for dinner. Let's eat. No, thanks. <laughs> I'm calling for pizza. U.S. West really helps me make better use of my time. Now I can relax and watch the game. Hello? Hi, honey. How's everything going? You don't want to know. What? Fourth quarter and my team's getting blown away. U.S. West, making the most of your time. Dodge Caravan is America's favorite minivan. Boy. 
because it's always being improved. This year, both driver and front passenger airbags are standard. Why? To meet 1998 car safety requirements. Which is also why Caravan now has additional dynamic side impact protection. And there's an available integrated child safety seat that reclines. Why? Ask your mother. Minute 39 to go, first quarter. Bill McCartney's CU Buffs down to Oklahoma State, 7-0 after the interception and then the quick OSU drive. James Kidd, two yards deep in his own end zone, decides not to run it out. Let's take a look at that last touchdown by Oklahoma State, Jimmy. Well, you'll see Joe Jefferson, the fullback's just going to get the ball. And here's what you want, one-on-one -on -one with Ted Johnson. He makes a nice stick, but just didn't get it square enough. He's got his head down just a little bit, and that just gives Joe Jefferson enough room. Right there, he had him stopped around the one-yard line, but just not enough to wrap up and keep him from getting in the end zone. And after the pick, OSU needed just four plays and 44 yards before Jefferson took it in. Cordell Stewart and the Buffs at their own 20-yard line. First down. Salam hit and then hit again. A gain of one. Richie Ainsley finally brought down Salam. Last week, as we mentioned, 165 yards and two touchdowns against the Cornhuskers. Had a nice day, and that made him top the Big 8 league rushing charts as far as per game average. Second and eight. The option again, which we're seeing more and more for the Buffs. Cordell gets it up to the 26, a gain of four. Jason Gilden, the fine right defensive end, makes the stop for OSU. Jason Gilden, the all-time sack leader here at OSU. Cordell got hit got pretty good right there. Maybe got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Hands on his hips, needs a little time to recover. But he's not going to get much time. Minus two yards rushing. Well, OSU so far has been in the, in the backfield all afternoon. Look out. Once again, they're in the backfield. Stewart gets it off. Is that one picked off? No. They say it hit the turf first. Levon Williams almost with the interception. Not a very advisable throw by Cordell Stewart as one of the Cowboys had his arms around Stewart's ankles. We're going to see Jason Gilden come in. He's going to beat Derek West on the right side. And Bill McCartney says, if, um, if uh, Cordell Stewart can see the blitz, he's not going to get sacked. If he can see where the pressure's coming from, and he was exactly right, he didn't get sacked, but it forced a bad throw, and now forcing a punt. Scott Harmon back to receive it for Mitch Berger. Handles the punt fine with that broken right thumb. It's another low kick. Harmon, a good chance to return. He's up to his own 48-yard line. OSU winning the battle of field position right now. Let's go to the sidelines and Mark McIntyre. Thank you, Les. You guys have talked about the motivation of CU coming off that Nebraska loss. One of the motivational tools they had before the ball game. Buff fans remember 1989 when the Buffs played at Washington. The game after Salonesi died before the ball game. All the players on their knees looking up to the sky, pointing with their index fingers. Well, they brought out a picture of that today to try to rally these troops, try to tell them that we are a team, we'll work together to win this ball game. So far, they're struggling. Back up to you guys. Andy Loveland back at quarterback for OSU after Mark Wilson came in for the touchdown drive. Loveland to a wide open tight end, Derek Jones. He gets first down yardage. Penalty flags down. It came real late, but I think the penalty is going to be on the left end, I think the tight end who actually moved before the snap of the ball. This play is going to come back. It is illegal motion against Oklahoma State. Pat Jones not very happy about that call. Let's go back down to the sidelines now. And Mark. Yeah, Les, like you were talking about on Mark Wilson's touchdown run, went over to the Oklahoma State side, and they worked on that this week. Mark Wilson has not played all year, but they thought the option play would work against Colorado. He came in to run the option and got the touchdown. Back up to you. Interesting. They bring him in just for that particular play, and Pat Jones will a uh, little trickery, a few things up his uh, sleeve. 
He goes with the other quarterback. And that's the end of the first quarter. The CU Buffs losing to Oklahoma State 7 to nothing. He would not believe it. We were doing this taste challenge, Coors Extra Gold versus Bud, and this Bud drinker, Charlie, took the challenge. He did it once, picked Coors Extra Gold, twice, he picked it again. Then, he did it a third time. He was so shocked. I'll pay you a hundred bucks if we get caught drinking another Bud. You don't have to pay a hundred bucks. Just pick up a six-pack of Extra Gold and get back to real beer. Darlene, the bartender, wrote up the contract. That night, someone bought him a Bud, he just pushed it away. The great masters, they defined civilization in Europe for centuries. Now we're defining civilization on the way there. The United Airlines' renowned international service moved to 15 cities all across Europe. Come fly the airline that's united the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Dear Midas, your mechanic gave me a free estimate and even pointed out that my brake pads were under warranty, saving me a lot. I was so thankful I bought them all lunch. Sarah Otto. Today's game is brought to you by McDonald's, by your Denver Front Range Dodge dealers, and by Zima. Start of the second quarter, the upset-minded Oklahoma State Cowboys leading 23rd-ranked Colorado 7 to nothing. Oklahoma State and Andy Loveland with the ball right now at their own 43-yard line. It's first and 15 after the procedure penalty. Pass complete to Fred Thomas. Almost escapes the tackler, Dalton Simmons. They're in CU territory again on the 47-yard line. This is just a drop-back pass and something that Oklahoma State doesn't do a whole lot of. They're more a play-action club, but Andy Loveland wants to go to Thomas all the way. Just simple patterns, just trying to get a little bit of yardage here, and then if something can happen like break a tackle, which almost happens, you see Simmons just get him by the top of the foot. If he doesn't have him by the foot with his hand, it was going to be a much bigger game. I think he grabbed the shoelace and tripped him up. Andy Loveland, not a strong arm, but a very accurate passer. They'll stay in the intermediate range more often than not. Fumble is a fumble. And it looks like CU has the ball. Daryl Boogie Johnson was the ball carrier. He coughed it up. And recovering for CU was number seven right there, Dalton Simmons. We'll see the end zone shot of this. And just a little draw play as Johnson comes in, and that ball is knocked out by several players. It looks like Matt Russell is the last one to get a hand on that ball. And then he's up for grabs and going all around on the turf. And a couple guys going for it. But you see Boogie Johnson first hit by Hicks. Ravel is in there. I guess it's Ted Johnson who actually causes the fumble. And a big break for CU as they needed it. Buffs have the ball at their own 48, down by seven. This is Lamont Warren, his first carry of the afternoon. He gets into OSU territory, a gain of three. Here's some stats from the first quarter. And you'll notice the Buffs with a big goose egg there wow. next to yards rushing. No yards rushing. 21 total yards the whole first quarter. A little trouble getting untracked here. Well, the Cowboys' defense is very good, but you wouldn't think that they're that good. You're talking about the number 10 offense in the nation with the CU Buffs. Cordell Stewart at the helm. He's two for four today. The interception that he threw led to the only Oklahoma State touchdown. Stewart right there. Incomplete intended for Michael Westbrook. Intended for number 81, Michael Westbrook. That ball thrown off the mark, and that was Cordell Stewart's trouble all last week. Watch the inside receiver right here, number 81, Michael Westbrook, as Johnson just drives Miles off the ball. And look, no one is around Michael Westbrook, but the ball is thrown way to his outside, and he got his hands on it. Maybe could have come up with the catch, but that ball could have been delivered a little more accurately from Cordell Stewart. Would have been a good game. 
Third and seven for CU. Cordell wants to put it up again. He goes deep. That's what he's best at. That pass is complete to T.J. Cunningham, and he's forced out at the 17-yard line. T.J. hasn't gotten much action this year. That's just his fourth catch of the season. Yeah, Cordell Stewart, as you mentioned, last very good at throwing the long ball. McCartney says you'll never see him under-throwing it, and he's quite accurate when he throws the long ball, and that time to T.J. Cunningham. Nice game, nice play by the quarterback. Cordell Stewart. Not a bad catch either. Over the shoulder, over the head kind of catch by TJ. TJ out of Overland High School. Cordell on the option. This ought to be a good game. He gets in for the touchdown. Not just a good game, a great game. There was nobody near him. I, I think he was as surprised he, as I was. He got great blocking on this. As you see Werner come up to take the pitch man, look at the blocking. No one is left unblocked. Cordell sets up the block of Michael Westbrook with a nice cut to the outside. Look at CJ blocking downfield on the goal at the goal line, and that's what really gets Cordell into the to the end zone. And did you notice how he gave a fake like he was going to go inside, and he froze a couple of defenders, yeah. then took it outside and just glided into the end zone. Really set up that block by Westbrook. Mitch Berger for the extra point. He's 25 out of 27 this year on extra points. Make that 26 out of 28. And this ball game is all tied up in Stillwater. CU 7, Oklahoma State 7, early second quarter. I was tired, listless. My hair looked bad. My dog moved away. My life was as bland as your average chicken sandwich. Then I tried McDonald's new grilled chicken. Now this was different. The marinated chicken breast with Monterey Jack, sweet red onions, tangy herb dressing on a bakery roll. Well, things changed. My hair looked great. My dog came home and we struck oil in the backyard. Coincidence? We don't think so. Try the new McGrill chicken sandwich. Further proof that what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. To make Dodge Intrepid more spacious, we move the wheels that normally go here, out, and back to here. Up front, the wheels that were here were moved out to here. It's a concept called cab forward that yields astonishing room for people like me. While good things like wider doors, sports car handling, and superb aerodynamics came along for the ride. Dodge and Trevor. This changes everything. Shapiro and Jim Ryan back with you in Stillwater, Oklahoma at Lewis Field. The CU Buffs just tied up the score against Oklahoma State with the Cordell Stewart touchdown run. And right now, Mitch Berger getting set to kick off to Rafael Denson, number 22 right there, and Shannon Culver, who's just to his right. This is Culver from his own three. A lot of blocking up the middle. Finally stopped at the 28-yard line. To the ground level touchdown run by Cordell Stewart. We'll see what he sees. Actually, we'll see him coming right at you. And right there, that cut that he made to the outside really set up the blocks downfield by CJ and by Michael Westbrook that allowed him to get all the way in for the touchdown. A quick drive, four yard, four plays, excuse me, 52 yards. We have 13.04 to go in the first half. Oklahoma State and quarterback Andy Loveland with first down from their own 28. A little dump off intended for Denson, incomplete. Put a little touch on that ball, Loveland did, just not quite enough. Yeah, he had to get this ball over number 56, Ronnie Woolfork, who is kind of on a little delayed blitz, and he decides, I'm not going to cover that back. I'm going to go after the quarterback, try to make a sack, and that completion could have gone for a little bit of yardage, but just can't make the connection. Brings up second and ten. is 
is put down. Dennis Collier came on the corner blitz. Dennis Collier, the senior out of San Bernardino, California. Watch number 22. He's going to follow the man in motion. You just saw it at the right part of your screen, and then he just turns and goes upfield, and Loveland wants to go deep but can't find anybody, and there is Dennis Collier. He comes in, makes a nice hit, tries to strip the ball, but it doesn't come out. I was just going to say, OSU should consider itself lucky. Collier, if he'd have gotten a better hit on that ball, would have forced it to pop out. Third and 18. They go with the draw up the middle. Pretty much conceding the punt. And that's exactly what OSU will do. Greg Lindsay made the stop on that running play. Colorado likes those corner blitzes against Kansas State. They had uh, Dalton Simmons come make two sacks against Chad May. Scott Tyner to punt and a new punt returner in the ballgame for CU. Now Charles Johnson. He's averaging almost eight yards a return. Used to be he and Chris Hudson rotated a lot more. Hudson getting the bulk of the work on the punt return team nowadays. Not a very good kick, but CJ lets it bounce from his own 32. And he gets it across the 40 up to the 42. We've got 11.27 to go in the second quarter. The score is tied at seven. So far, a much tougher game than anybody expected from Oklahoma State. Colorado came in here about a 16-point favorite. The Cowboys, with a record of 3-5, and 0-4 oh in the Big 8, have had a lot of close games. They've only been out of the game one time, and that was against Missouri about three weeks ago. the middle with some room is Lamont Warren he gets it across midfield to the OSU 48 Scott Harmon finally makes the stop watch the left side of Colorado's offensive line here as they'll push everybody to the right Tony Birdie just look at that they clear out a hole that's just unbelievable and Lamont just trying to make a move on Harmon into the secondary but when you're back and you see that much green turf in front of you, you get a little excited. That was, they were pushing them around like ragdolls. Yeah. That was unbelievable. You, you got to win that war up front. And again, we mentioned Oklahoma State very light up front. After a gain of nine, it's second and one. Cordell complete to CJ. He's inside the 40, forced out by Delvin Miles at the 37. On the coverage number seven, Delvin Miles from Cowboys. CJ so precise in running his patterns. Watch him drive off Miles. He gets him turned, and then when he turns, Cordell's got the ball there, delivered on time, and there's nothing a defensive cornerback can do but come up and make a sure tackle. He gave him that little chug-chug fake, mm -hmm. working those arms up and down like he was going to go deep, and turned it inside. On first down, Ron Warren stopped for a loss of one by Keith Burns, the linebacker. First time we've called his name, although... A Butkus Award finalist, uh, one of four from the Big 8 Conference, Keith Burns. He's not a guy that's going to make a lot of big plays. Not a guy that's going to make the big hits and tackle for loss and sacks. He has no sacks during the course of the year, but just makes a lot of tackles sideline to sideline. Player hurt on the field. Keith Burns loves playing against the Buffs. Last year in Boulder, he had 19 tackles, 15 <laughs> of them unassisted. Mm. Looks like Craig Anderson, number 70, is the injured CU buff. Of course, Craig Anderson playing for Chad Hammond, who didn't even make the trip because he has some back problems. Anderson, a starter last year, tore a knee ligament after the sixth game and came out. This year he started out at number two on the depth chart behind Hammond. And if Anderson's out of the ball game, they're going to the third stringer, who is listed as Corey Smith. But I just saw Matt Lepsis come into the ball game. Lepsis, a tight end and an offensive lineman. Let's see where he lines up. Oh, he's lined up at tight end. And it looks like Corey Smith is playing the right guard position now. The third stringer out of the morning. Stewart on the option really couldn't make his mind up and did the prudent thing and went down before he got his head taken off. <laughs> Let's go down to Mark McIntosh on the field. Actually, that's what they did for that one play as Craig Anderson comes back into the game. They actually moved Derek West from right tackle 
to right guard. And now Derek West coming out of the ballgame. Chris Naoli will remain at right tackle now. Craig Anderson back in the game. Looks like he's okay. He's back in his right guard position. Back up to you guys. Third and 12 for the bus. Here they come. The big blitz. Stewart saw it coming. Amazing how he stays on his feet and might turn it into a big gain. First on yardage and out of bounds at the 24-yard line. I thought he was going down, Jim. I did, too, and you've got to credit. Watch Lamont Warren, number 12, pick up the blitz, and look what he does to Keith Burns. Boom! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Lamont is just probably standing over and saying, yeah, I got you, big guy. I got you, and that allows Stewart to get free, but then Cordell does quite a bit on his own. Cordell Stewart has run the ball seven times for 40 yards and the only CU touchdown on the day. There's an OSU player hurt on the field. Looks like Jason Gilden. Mm, that would be a big loss for the Cowboys. It certainly would. Second team all Big 8 last year. A gifted pass rusher. Holds the OSU record for career sacks with 34 and a half. He broke the record of Leslie O'Neill, mm. who's a pretty good NFL player with the San Diego Chargers right now. Well, in 90 and 91, that man right there was all Big 8 first team. And they say he single-handedly beat Tulsa. Had a number of tackles, forced a couple fumbles, recovered a fumble. And right now, he's hobbled. I think what he did was he planted that foot and tried to make the turn on the turf. And you know the turf doesn't have any give. Oh, look at this, Jimmy. Your alma mater, William and Mary beat Maine 47 to 23. What does that make William & Mary's record? I think they're seven and two. They're ranked in one double A. They'll probably make the playoffs. They're having a good year. New Year's Day bowl game, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> First down after the fine Cordell Stewart run from the 24-yard line of OSU. This time, Cordell doesn't stay on his feet, and he's thrown for a two-yard loss. The man who threw him was Keith Burns. And that's an interesting scenario. Is Keith Burns just got leveled in the previous play by Lamont Warren. But the sign of a great player, and I think Keith Burns is a great player, is how you come back from that. Yeah, it's a sin, not a sin to be blocked, just a sin to stay blocked. And on this play, he doesn't stay blocked. He comes in and makes the big play. As you see, Cordell wants to, I think he might have had a little run uh, pass option there. But Burns comes in and snuffs it out. Loss of two brings up second and 12. Is Warren up the middle, still on his feet, down to the 21. Javon Langford finally brings him down. The Buffs should have the advantage up front as their offensive line has really come together. Coach McCartney told us yesterday uh, part of their offense, and there's Jason Gilden back in the ball game. A part of their offense, their offensive line coming into this game that was a real question mark has turned into a real strength. Third and six. See you at the Oklahoma State 20-yard line. Over the middle, Michael Westbrook. Down to the 16-yard line. He's short of the first down. And Mitch Berger is coming out onto the field for a field goal attempt. This is really what amounts to a wide receiver screen pass as Michael Westbrook's going to come inside, but wet read very well by that man, number 42, Eric Hobbs. The middle linebacker actually plays all the different positions. And he's able to come in and make the stop. 33-yard field goal attempt for Mitch Berger. On the year, he is 11 for 16 in field goals. Most of his misses have been wide left. This one, though, right down the middle. And Mitch Berger has given the CU Buffs a 10 to 7 lead. We have 7.31 to go, first half. Chances are, you'd expect to find a business banker in a bank. But you might not expect to find one discussing business on a ranch or engaged in conversation at a local ski resort. In fact, there's no telling where you'll find a Norwest business banker conducting business. But then they figure, before they can begin to help people in the business community, they have to be part of it.
I'm mean or tough. Horde safety. Horde comfort. Horde value. Save big on the best-selling trucks in America. Up to $1,200 on Ford F-Series during Truck Month. Ford Truck Month. Only at your Ford dealer. Back in Stillwater, CU, with a 33-yard field goal from Mitch Berger, has just taken the lead over OSU, 10 to 7. We've got 7.31 to go, first half, and the Buffs are kicking off. Oh, no, they're not. The official stop play on the field as Berger approaches the tee. That ball. reminds me of uh, Charlie Brown and Lucy, right? She's always pulling the yeah, ball. Go away. ahead, kick it, Charlie. I won't pull it. And he falls for it every time. You'd think he'd learn. Yeah, he You'd never think does. he would read the comics, <laughs> and he would know it was coming. Well, let's see if Mitch Berger's learned. <laughs> Raphael Denson and Shannon Culver looking at a squib kick here. Culver takes it on the fly. And tackled at the 28-yard line. Culver comes up limping. Look at this, Jimmy. Wow. In, in Lawrence, Kansas, the Jayhawks and the Huskers are tied in the third quarter. Nebraska sitting atop the Big 8 standings right now, still undefeated and ranked sixth in the country. That would be one of the major upsets of the year. For Buff fans, the Cornhuskers would actually have to lose two of their last three games for the Buffs to win the Big 8 title. Can you imagine if that put Kansas State on top and they went to the Orange Bowl? Mm. David Thompson, no room up the middle, so he turns it left, and he runs into a traffic jam there also. And the stop number 90, Sam Rogers. Sam Rogers made the tackle. A tackle for a loss. Along with Matt Russell, as you see there. Every time somebody talks about Matt Russell, all they keep saying is, what a character. <laughs> he walks around in, in weather like this with just shorts on and no, just a T-shirt. and Always got the uh, music playing in his ears. He's a real character. He's also a very, very good football player. And yesterday, we're boarding the flight, and it's snowing in Denver, <laughs> and he's got those sweatpants rolled up to his knees. I'm out. Oklahoma State. And the sleeves on his T-shirt rolled up to his shoulders. Oklahoma State takes a timeout. It's first time out of the half, so each team has two T.O.'s left. 6.50 to go, first half. The Buffs with a 10-7 lead. You know, we're talking about the... Colorado and their chances for the Big 8 title. And speaking with that man last night, Bill McCartney, he said, you know, these last three games, everyone in the world just, in their mind, has these last three chalked up for the bus and talking about, well, where are we going to go to the Aloha Ball, the John Hancock Ball, a few other uh, opportunities. He said, but I have not chalked these up in my mind. We still have to go out and play these football games, and as the first quarter was evidence, that's true. I mean, they were down seven to nothing coming out of the first quarter. Yeah, it's funny, we go through this every year, whether we're talking to an NFL head coach or a college head coach, we look at the schedule before the season starts and we say, well, that's a win, yeah. that's a win, <laughs> that's a loss, that's a loss. But the coaches never, ever oh, no, look no. at it that way. They and look they at, can't. They yeah. look at every game as a potential loss. Sure. And they work out of fear more so than anything else to turn it into a win. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look three games ahead. He looks at today's game and he says, if we don't do this and we don't do this, this is going to be a blemish on our record. Second and 11. They set up the screen, but it's incomplete. The screen was intended for Joe Jefferson, and on the coverage was Ted Johnson. Bill looked a little tired when we talked to him in his hotel room yeah. yesterday. And I think he's a little worn out from not only the week preceding the Nebraska game and before that it was the Kansas State game after the tie but uh, since the Nebraska game I think he's taken some heat locally and he's handled it he's weathered the storm but not without being a little tired as you and game day re-energizes him too he looked a lot better this morning when we saw him third and 11 over the middle Raphael Denson they're calling it complete Looked like it might have taken a short hop off the turf, but Denson got his arms underneath it. And a first down for OSU. Looks like Denson's going to be covered by number 47, Chris Hudson. Colorado plays a lot of man-to-man, -man, and he was able to shake Hudson free. You saw Hudson just in the corner. See, 
Chris slip down and fall? I think that's a clean catch. But as Denson and Hudson both made their breaks, Chris fell down. Excuse me, Les. That's all right. OSU from its own 45. Up the middle they go. That's Joe Jefferson. Maybe a yard. On the stop number 46, Ted Johnson for the Buffaloes. Ted Johnson there once again. We're calling his name a lot. Ted Johnson very active today. In a ball play. Brings up second down. Coming into the game is the leading tackler for Colorado. 92 tackles. Averages 11 and a half tackles per game. Far ahead of anybody else on this ball mm -hmm. play. Second and eight for the Buffs. Excuse me, for OSU. That pass thrown into a crowd, almost picked off by Chris Hudson. And you see Dwayne Davis jumping around. He say, he why? Yeah, if Hudson <laughs> didn't tip it, he would have had it. He said, I had the pick. Uh-oh. That's Chris Hudson limping around. And it looks serious. Andy Loveland going deep. He had a little pressure in his face. And as you mentioned, why is he throw it into the coverage? Hudson, nice coverage. On Denson, he had the deep help in the post from number 21, Dwayne Davis, who says, I would have had that interception if you don't mess me up. Chris came oh, down hard ball, after man. he went in the air. He came down hard on his right foot on the turf. Andy Loveland, not a very good day throwing the ball. Three for nine. This time, the Shannon Culver, that was a good throw. And down to the CU 29-yard line. Dalton Simmons the coverage. See, what happens here is Loveland picks out the open man. Dalton Simmons has got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Colorado does a lot of that because you see number 21, Dwayne Davis, coming on the blitz. He just gets inside of Dalton Simmons. is able to make the catch. Looking at him all the way, too. That pass intended for this man right here, Shannon Culver. And the Buffs are lucky that Culver wasn't hitting the stride with that pass, or he could have been gone. Mm -hmm. A little behind him, and that saved the touchdown. From the 30-yard line, OSU with the first down. This is David Thompson. Well, Colorado's been playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary, as we mentioned, last. And when you don't have help in the post, when you just have one-on-one -on -one with no help anywhere, that's the most difficult thing for a cornerback to do. And Dalton Simmons, actually, that's what happened against Nebraska uh, when Corey Dixon went 60 yards for the touchdown last week. And this week, again, gets a pass caught in front of him. But as a cornerback, you have to have tough skin because you know that's very, very difficult to do. There are going to be times when passes are caught on you, but you're going to have to have your time also. Plus, Dalton Simmons right there, fairly experienced. He didn't even play in two of the first five games, and all of a sudden he's in the starting lineup. Almost caught in the end zone by Shannon Culver. Bounced off both his hands. It was a heck of an effort. Mm. And this time, it's very good covered coverage by number seven, Dalton Simmons. It's just kind of the fade pattern into the end zone, and he comes a, very close to catching that ball. And when it first left Andy Loveland's hand, I thought the ball was well overthrown, but it had enough height underneath of it. It got to Culver. Almost made the play. Again, nice coverage by Simmons. He was there. Loveland put it the only place the defender couldn't get it. Third and nine. Incomplete. Off the hands of the tight end, Dwayne Watts. And let's see what Oklahoma State does here. Lawson Vaughn is their field goal specialist. And he is in the ball game. This is a pretty lengthy attempt for him. He's an accurate kicker, but he doesn't have a very strong leg. This will be a 47-yard attempt. It's deep enough, but it's wide to the right. So the score remains the same. With 4.28 to go, first half, the Buffs lead it 
A lot of champagne glasses have been used to prove how smooth a car can be at high speed. Surely, a toast is in order for a truck that can do the same. New Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. Experience how the rules have changed. Take the ultimate test drive at your nearest Dodge dealer. I was tired, listless. My hair looked bad. My dog moved away. My life was as bland as your average chicken sandwich. Then I tried McDonald's new McGrilled Chicken. Now this was different. A marinated chicken breast with Monterey Jack, sweet red onions, tangy herb dressing on a bakery roll. Well, things changed. My hair looked great. My dog came home and we struck oil in the backyard. Coincidence? <laughs> we don't think so. Try the new McGrilled Chicken Sandwich. Further proof that what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The Buffs with the ball and a 10-7 lead after the missed field goal by Lawson Vaughn and OSU. Salam tries the right side, gets a couple of yards out of it. Scott Harmon, the free safety with the tackle. As we mentioned, 165 yards last week for Salam, a guy that uh, just a couple years ago was playing eight-man football in San Diego. Gain of four on the carry. Scott Harmon out of Hominy, Oklahoma. One of the better safeties in the Big Eight. Cordell Stewart doing a better job running the ball than throwing the ball today. He'll try the air here. Rashawn Salam, the reception. And a first down for CU. Now this is a play that is typical of what Bill McCartney is excited about this offense. He was talking about it yesterday, and the reason that he is so excited is that he can get into different positions, different formations, without changing personnel, and you see Salam goes in motion. There's no backs in the backfield. He does just a little out in front of Williams and makes the first down, and he can do that because his tailbacks are such good receivers. First down from their own 41. Up the middle for a five-yard gain goes Salam. Charles Werner, the tackle. Whereas most teams do a lot of substitutions, less on second down, third down. CU does very, very little of that. They go basically with their two ends, two tight ends, two wide receivers, and one back, and then they can go into a lot of different formations from that same personnel. And the reason is simple. They have great athletes on offense. Mm -hmm. Athletes who can play any number of positions. Very adaptable, very versatile. Second and six. Stewart on the option. Salam. Hit hard at the 49-yard line. He's a couple yards short of the first down. Charles Werner stuck him with the helmet. The Cowboys do a pretty good job of stringing this play out. As you see, Cordell Stewart's going to go to his left and actually pitch it right-handed. And look at Werner, who actually makes a pretty good play in making Cordell pitch the ball and still gets in on the tackle. And that was number 35 for the Cowboys, Charles Werner. And Harmon helped him out stopping Salam. That brings up third and two. Two and a half minutes to go, first half. Salam tries to go over the top. I think he's a little short, Jimmy. Yeah, I do too. He wasn't sure whether to actually jump or hurdle or whatever. I don't think Rashawn really got off the ground the way he wanted to. And somebody clipped his feet, and it's definitely short. Yeah, and the indecision. Brings on the punting unit for the bus. Mitch Berger with two punts today. Averaging almost 46 yards a kick. Scott Harmon to return it. That one almost blocked again. And another low kick. A line driver that Harmon fields at his own 10. A return of six yards for Harmon. I, 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 yeah, I thought that Gilden was going to stuff that back in Berger's face. It went right under his armpit. 141 to go, first half. Buffs lead it 10 to 7. Oklahoma State giving him a tougher time than the Buffs probably expected. Andy Loveland still in a quarterback for Oklahoma State. With Tony Jones hurt and out with a separated shoulder. Gary Porter 
are suspended. <laughs> Up the middle goes OSU. Gain of about four. Matt Russell made the play on that, but I think he took the brunt of that hit. <laughs> I love this kid. Nose for the ball. Watch nice Matt tough. Russell. He gets a nice running start on Franks, and then boom. Oh, oh. I'm going to go backwards. He's still going to make the play, but that's Roger Franks powering over Matt Russell. Second and six. Once again, Oklahoma State up the middle. And of a couple yards, that'll bring up third and two. And Colorado's going to take a timeout here with just one minute to go, and now a third down situation for Oklahoma State. Colorado actually takes the timeout. They want the ball back, try to get a score before halftime. The Buffs have one timeout left. Let's take a look at those Big Eight standings, show you where everybody sits right now. Nebraska's still undefeated on top. Kansas State. With a 2-1-1 one one record tied for second place with CU. Then you have Oklahoma. Kansas tied with the Sooners along with Missouri. Iowa State and Oklahoma State bring up the rear. The Cowboys coming in here with a four-game losing streak. All four games in conference play. And all four of those top, the top four teams are all playing the bottom four teams and all on the road. Kind of an unusual quirk of quirk, yeah. yeah, in the schedule. Ninth ranked Florida putting it to Southwest Louisiana, 61-14. Florida still has to play Florida State. A lot of people think that's going to be the toughest game for the Seminoles as they try to finish the season undefeated. Third and two. OSU with the ball at its own 24. Not close to the first down. A nice play made by Matt Russell. Ronnie Wolfork also forced that one outside so Russell could make the tackle. We've been calling number 16 a lot as he won the starting position from John Knutson a few games ago and just comes unblocked. Nice play by Matt Russell, but it, you can always make nice plays when you're unblocked. Now, Boogie Johnson didn't have a prayer there. He didn't get the men in front of him that he needed. And that brings up fourth down for Oklahoma State. 54 seconds to go in the first half. The Buffs are going to get the ball back one more time, and they are dangerous in the two-minute drill. We'll tell you about that after the punt. In the meantime, Scott Tyner in the ball game for OSU to kick it. And let's see if it's C.J. or Chris Hudson back there to return it. I would guess it would be CJ simply because Hudson came out limping yeah. a couple of series ago, and it is. Charles Johnson running out now to return the punt for the bus. We'll see if they try to go after this with 54 seconds. They may try to set up a return for Charles Johnson and then take their chances of getting a field goal or even a touchdown with just a few seconds left in the first half. Buffs have no timeouts left after just burning their last one. A nice kick by Tyner. High and deep. CJ from his own 33 looking to get to the sideline. He's going to get across midfield. Almost runs into his own man. And CJ out of bounds at the 36 of OSU. That's what they needed. Mm -hmm. Return for they set up a right return for Charles Johnson, but he has to do something on his own. He has to get away from Scott Johnson. Look at the move, a little stiff arm, and then he's got blocking up the sideline, and that's what really made this play go. He runs over Eric Mitchell, his own guy. But he gets down all the way to the 36-and-a-half yard line, so great return. A 32-yard return for Charles Johnson. Stewart, a nice pass and a nice catch by Michael Westbrook. He just threaded the needle right in between two defenders there, and the Buffs are inside the 20-yard line. Cordell's going to Michael Westbrook all the way. He's the inside receiver, just makes an out break, and Cordell puts the ball in the money. Very accurate throw. First down at the OSU 17. 
Cordell Stewart stops the clock by throwing the ball into the ground. And he'll come to the sideline to talk things over with Bill McCartney, the quarterback's coach. Well, he won't stay there long because it's not a timeout. We have none remaining. 28 seconds, plenty of time to get the ball into the end zone for the Buffs. If nothing else, they're well within field goal range. Mm -hmm. Sitting right now at the 17-yard line. Second down. Second and 10. Short pass to Rashawn Salam, who hangs on and stiff arms his way to the nine. He might get called yeah. for a penalty there. He might have thrown him by the face mask. Yeah, you're allowed to stiff arm a guy, but I don't know that you're allowed to go to the face and then kind of throw your hand into his face mask. Here's Salam, and he's wide open as they had just dropped back. And he almost drops that ball. The, the Cowboys were in a, a face uh, mask. Yeah, that's a, that's a face mask. He grabs the face mask and then throws the head of Cleavon Williams away. Now, you, as a, as a former NFL linebacker, can probably uh, expound on this better than myself, but you want to hit somebody in a situation, whether on offense or defense, and sometimes you just go for the closest part of the body, and it happens <laughs> to be the face mask. Yeah, you that, know it's illegal, but it's there. And, and the, the officials usually will determine whether you tried to let go of the face mask. I don't know if I've ever seen that called before. Have you ever seen that called on a runner actually grabbing a face mask of a defender? No, I haven't. I, I, that's the first time I've ever seen that call. So even though I think it's probably the proper call, I don't know that I've ever seen a precedent for that before. That pushes the Buffs back to the 26-yard line. Still in field goal range. The touchdown, though, will be a little tougher with just 20 seconds to go in the half. Second and nine. Going for the end zone is Stewart. Is it brought down? Yes, it is. A touchdown. Touchdown, Charles Johnson. What a great athletic move by CJ. How many times have we seen something like that from Charles Johnson? They wrestle for the ball in the end zone, and CJ comes down with it. I'm not so sure Cordell should have thrown this ball in there. Look, he is well covered. But Cordell says, I'm going to take my chances on my guy going up and taking this ball down. And he's right if he's gambling on that because number nine, Charles Johnson, just makes another in a long list of outstanding athletic catches. Berger, the extra point is good. And with 13 seconds to go, the Buffs have run out to a 17 to 7 lead. That can be really demoralizing for a team going into the locker room right now. Well, Pat Jones and his club. Uh, did not want this to happen and here we go again as Stewart is throwing look at the crowd there if you're Cordell Stewart you think you should throw that ball well <laughs> well, <laughs> well you know Cordell it, Stewart maybe you do well it's a calculated risk also because you not only have CJ who has great athletic talent you have another great athlete in there Michael Westbrook was within five yards of that pass and yeah. why not throw it up when you have those two great athletes there to possibly bring it down I agree and you're at the very end of the half if you do get the pick you know, maybe you've taken three points off the board, but it's uh, it's not a bad risk, and uh, especially when you're throwing to that guy. This kid reminds me of uh, Lynn Swan, who made so many mm. great acrobatic yeah, catches I don't for think the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good comparison. So the scores around the country: Ohio State and Wisconsin both fighting for the Big Ten title. The Buckeyes with a seven to nothing lead in the second quarter. And right here, 17-7 buffs with 13 seconds to go in the half. Let's see what Mitch Berger does as he tees up the kick. If he allows him a chance to run it back or if he squibs it. But imagine he'll kick this ball on the ground and not risk a big return or even a touchdown return. For the Cowboys. Raphael Denson and Shannon Culver, two dangerous kick returners. He does squib it. Be taken by one of the men in the middle there, and he's down at the 36-yard line. That's Mark Spatz, who's a fullback for OSU, running the ball back. Ten seconds to go in the half. Loveland, again, not with a very strong arm, so I would doubt he would put it up trying to grab some cheap points here. No, I think Pat Jones and his club are just going to go in and try to regroup at halftime. It's only a 10-point deficit. I'm sure he will not feel like he's out of it. Uh, we're wrong. 
as usual. <laughs> he is going, and you can see, not a very strong arm. That ball thrown well out of bounds, and that leaves three seconds on the clock. Well, I guess if, if you're Pat Jones, you say, we're 0-4, why not just throw it up? <laughs> Try to get something. Maybe maybe something magical will happen if we throw the ball up. Uh, that's a good point. On the face of it, it doesn't seem like a very smart move, considering Loveland's arm strength. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah, Pat Jones, pretty he's a gambling kind of guy, not uh, one to shy away from putting the ball up or doing some gambling things, and he'll walk a couple miles on that sideline today. This time Loveland tripped up as the cannon goes off. It's the end of the half, 17-7 to 7 CU. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. It's our weekly search for Coach Bill McCartney. His team up 17-7 right here. Here he comes, Coach. We are live back to Denver. Big shot in the arm for your team getting that touchdown before half. Yeah, it was a great play by Johnson. The face mask penalty was really threatening to take us out of field goal range even with the wind blowing like it is. Offensively, I imagine you feel going to halftime, if you can just sustain some drives in the second half, that'll be all right. I think we can solve what they're doing and start to move the ball consistently in the second half. That'd be what we'll try to get done. Okay. All right, Coach Bill McCartney going in to talk to his troops ahead 17-7. A little flat in the first half, I think, not to the surprise of a lot of people considering the uh, loss last week to Nebraska and see you when they come down there always seems to struggle with OSU but they got a 10 point lead at halftime last back up to you. Thanks Mark that touchdown with a few seconds left might have been the spark see you needed to get its head into this ball game. We'll take a break come back with some halftime festivities. Chances are you'd expect to find a business banker in a bank. But you might not expect to find one discussing business on a ranch or engaged in conversation on Main Street. In fact, there's no telling where you'll find a Norwest business banker conducting business. But then they figure, before they can begin to help people in the business community, they have to be part of it. Paul Marie talks about his successful business philosophy. Customer service has been our key to survival and to our growth. We will do anything for a customer. Anyone that comes in and asks any one of our staff members to do something, it will be done and they will have what they want. We have expertise in the department stores today and the shopping malls. You can't find anyone that knows anything about what they're doing. We know what we're doing. We're going to make it and our competitors are going to have a tough time. Airport? It flies in the face of reason. <laughs> I guess I won't see Gene at the ribbon cutting. Light rail? Gene, light rail is Denver's future. Our torn up streets, hey, the whole city is a mousetrap. What it does is very moving. With everyone's support, it really flies. And search all over Denver for a used car or truck. You have to go to Lakewood to get a clearance center price. The Lakewood Ford Land Clearance Center. Acres of late model, nearly new cars and trucks. All at clearance center prices. Come to Lakewood Ford Land. Only one ninety nine down delivers any used car or truck anytime. Go beyond the ordinary dealer. Used cars and trucks only one ninety nine down anytime. Only at the clearance center. Don't pay what you don't have to for a used car or truck. Pass the other dealer's buy. Get the clearance center price. Come to the Lakewood Ford Land Clearance Center. On Colfax West of Kipling. The way you buy used cars will change forever. Get Real, weeknights on Denver's TV 20. Back in Stillwater, Oklahoma, Les Shapiro along with Jim Ryan. And one thing I noticed is Bill McCartney went into the locker room talking with our Mark McIntosh. A 17-7 lead. They scored just before the half ended. He seemed very confident and very matter-of-fact about being able to dominate Oklahoma State in the second half. I was a little surprised. Well, I think he said, as he mentioned, they're going to figure out what Oklahoma State was doing offensively. And I think in the second quarter, you saw that starting to evolve as they really got untracked, got some of the cobwebs out, got some maybe uh, some of the residual effects of the Nebraska game out of their system. And now they're you know on to better and bigger things. And I think that uh, he really believes that they'll be able to solve OSU's very good defense and, and really move the ball. Colorado with a 17 to 7 lead. We're at halftime. Got a lot to tell you about, so stick around. The new Ram pickup features a frame design so strong it's been patented. Its available rear step bumper can pull 5,000 pounds by itself without the help of that frame. And the tie downs in back are so strong 
that can support the weight of the entire truck. We overbuilt this pickup because we were sure you'd never underwork it. New Dodge Ram, the rules have changed. Experience how the rules have changed. Take the ultimate test drive at your nearest Dodge dealer. Hey, I like to save money as much as the next guy. But what are the odds that there's going to be a sale on the part you need when your car breaks down? Baby, it's not going to happen. That's why I go to AutoZone. I mean, sure, you can wait around for a couple weeks and maybe beat their price by a few pennies someplace else. But I don't want to wait for a sale when I need a part. Now, what more could you ask for? Isn't this fabulous? The girl at the club told me about it. I've been dying to see it. See your brother in the Let's call a metro broker. And off the master bedroom is, of course, the master bathroom. Isn't that beautiful? Or it will be once you rip out that awful tile. I'm with the tour. Honey, let's call a metro broker. Metro brokers understand that real estate isn't just property. It's people. Yeah, I just kind of always want to learn how to surf. I don't have to worry about use of excessive force. Did you come to fight? We'll talk. Renegade, Highlander, Saturday night starting at 7 on Denver's TV 20. It's halftime in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Let's go down onto Lewis Field now. Mark McIntosh has a story about a couple of fanatic football fans and would-be authors. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. Over the last few years, we've seen the emergence of things like baseball fantasy camps where guys go down to Florida and get to play baseball, say, with major leaguers, ex-major leaguers. Well, there's two guys from Boston who are living out of fantasy surrounding college football. They are going from coast to coast this year, attending some of the great college football games in the nation. And last week, we caught up with them in Boulder, where they attended the CU Nebraska game. How you doing? Great to be here. Isn't she beautiful? She is the limousine Phil Silverman and his buddy Bob Waldstein are driving around the country. And they've been around. By the time they hit Boulder for Colorado's game against Nebraska, they had covered more than 7,000 miles. Yet Bob wasn't prepared for the Rocky Mountain weather. Had no idea it was going to be this cold. <laughs> but we figured it was a flip of the coin, 50-50, it'll snow out here. And Bob was willing to take that chance, you know? <laughs> Penn State, LSU, South Bend, the great venues of college football, and some stops in between. Red Bar and Grill, that's from, uh, I can't even remember, that must be, who was Fred's Bar and Grill again? LSU. LSU, Baton Rouge. We got the Elvis sticker, we saw it through Graceland once, just to be near the king. The most asked question on their trek, which ends on the West Coast, why? You know, our jobs were kind of nice. Bob was a financial analyst and I was a lawyer, but, you know, it's, and it's not the same as just going and sitting and watching college football, you know? I mean, granted, it doesn't pay as well, but uh, it had to be done. Somebody had to do it, and we were stupid enough to apply for the job, so here we are. The miles between stops become long and tiresome. The food is usually fast and cheap. Is we find the happy hours at the bars. We go, we drink a Diet Coke, and we just eat everything they have. But once these guys reach their destination, they have some fun. You got the snowball? Yep. You ready? Yep. All right, here we go. You got to... Okay. Give me, give me the... Hey, <laughs> This is great. These guys also have some financial incentive. They are writing a book about their adventure. It's called Saturday Afternoon Madness. It's expected out at the beginning of the college football season next fall. Les, back up to you. Oh, looks like a lot of fun. Thanks, Mark. And we'll be right back in Stillwater with some scores and highlights for you.
Well, the Buffs coming out onto the field to start the second half. We're getting ready for the kickoff, but before we do that, Jim Ryan, let's take a look at some first-half highlights, all right? Well, it was all Oklahoma State mostly in the first quarter, and they capped a uh, drive that brought them into the end zone with this play. Joe Jefferson getting up by Ted Johnson and in for the touchdown on a one-yard run. That was after the interception. And then Colorado comes back, and this is just an outstanding run by Cordell Stewart. Gets some great downfield blocking, and Colorado really needed this to get back in the ball game at seven apiece. And then we see Cordell at the end of the first half, and this is really the play of the half because Colorado goes in with the 10-point lead because of that play and that man, C.J. Johnson, as he just goes up and takes the ball away from the defender. We see another angle of it as Cordell really throws into coverage, and Miles, number seven for Oklahoma State, has C.J. covered pretty well, but he goes up and makes the athletic catch, and look how he takes it away from Miles. If Miles actually had his left hand on that ball, but the strength of Johnson takes it away. And some numbers to show you from the first half. Neither team doing much on the ground. The difference in this game right now, the passing yardage, the Buffs more than twice as many as Oklahoma State, 127 yards in the air. Look at that yards rushing after the first quarter. That was a big goose egg for the Buffalo. So they got 60 yards in that second quarter, so they really improved that running game. CU won the opening coin toss and elected to kick off, which means Oklahoma State will kick off this half. James Kidd, much too deep in his own end zone to return the ball, so the Buffs will start with it at their own 20. The Buffs coming in as heavy favorites. Let's see if the touchdown pass that ended the first half sparks them on to greater things here in the second half. Cowboy defense did a pretty good job early on stopping the Buffs, but uh, as Bill McCarty said going in halftime, we think we figured out what they're doing. Jim, one thing to look for here, Cordell Stewart has 29 yards rushing on the day, but passing, he only needs one more yard to become CU's all-time passing leader, and he got it right there. The first down pass completion to Michael Westbrook, and Cordell Stewart now on the top of the charts in CU's all-time record book for yards passing. And he passes Steve Vogel. Here you see Michael Westbrook just doing a simple out. And this is where Colorado, I think, is at its best in their simple little plays in offense where they can get timing and get those great receivers uh, out into the backfield. Just, just little cuts and little uh, hooks. And Cordell can put the ball right in there. On first down, Rashawn Salam is thrown for a loss behind the 30-yard line, a loss of three. Richie Ainsley did the throwing. Watch the middle linebacker, number 40. Ainsley just comes right up the middle. And, you know, I think that with all the accolades that a Keith Burns is getting here at Oklahoma State, this man, Richie Ainsley, is really getting overlooked. I think he's an underrated player. He is in the backfield and making as many plays, I think, as Keith Burns. Well, you like him even more than Burns, don't mm -hmm. you? I do. Second and 12. Off the hands of Charles Johnson. It looks like C.J. hurt his right hand. Might have caught the ball on the tip of a finger. Mm. He's shaking that right hand. <laughs> Look at he's saying, sorry. Sorry, man. He's wide open, and the ball just above his head. Catchable ball, and it does look like it goes off his right thumb. Saying, ouch, that hurt. Boy, especially on a chilly day like today. Nothing serious, though. I mean, that, that can jam your finger pretty good. You get a thumb. I mean, you've seen broken hands and broken thumbs on passes like that. Cordell Stewart, that has that kind of arm strength. Third and 12. Looks like Cordell Stewart might be changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't like what he sees, and he calls a timeout. Timeout, Colorado. I think the play clock had gone down and was about to expire, so Cordell wisely takes the timeout. A lot of other games going on around the Big 8 today. Everybody playing. Look at this, Nebraska. Just a one-point winner over unranked Kansas. You know what happened? Kansas scored late in that ball game with about a minute to go. They went for two less and didn't get it. So Nebraska escapes Lawrence with a one-point victory. 
I would imagine that might cost Nebraska a couple notches in the national rankings. Ranked sixth right now. Well, they keep winning and keep dropping. Well, they don't. I don't know if they've really dropped position, but they lost votes. They did. They dropped one position yeah. last week, even after winning. Yeah. And they then you have, on the other hand, another Big 18, Kansas State. In the last three weeks, they go 1-1-1. One, one, and one. They go from off the charts to 18th in the poll. <laughs> figure it out. Figure. <laughs> it's those media guys. <laughs> Oh, I mean, that's two it's votes it's in the Associated Press rankings, the media across the country. Third and 12. Cordell Stewart tried to lift that ball into some coverage to Michael Westbrook and the linebacker. Excuse me, the defensive back, Cleavon Williams, got up high enough to tip the ball away. Cordell's been getting very good. See how he's looking left, looking left, and then he comes back right, and he thinks that should look off the safety or the defensive back, Williams, but it's not enough. He's under pressure, and Gilden gets a piece of Cordell Stewart as he lets that ball go. Mitch Berger in to punt. Four times today, he's averaging almost 42 yards. And that's Scott Harmon to return it. There have been some good rushes on Berger when he's been punting today. That time he gets it off. Harmon from his 21. A return of seven yards up to the 28-yard line of OSU, and that's where the Cowboys and the Cowboy fans will start with it. Seven-yard return for Harmon and the Cowboys. See that Oklahoma State fan just kind of ho hum. He's had a lot of practice at that the last few years. Now the Cowboys are only two years removed from a winless season. 0-10 and 1. Last year they did a little better. Four, six, and one. Pat Jones even got some votes as Big Eight Coach of the Year. And this year the Cowboys are three and five. David Thompson, the freshman, has room. Spins away and gets it to midfield. Another in a long line of very good tailbacks at Oklahoma State, including Barry Sanders and Thurman Munson. They really kept him in check during the first half. Russell comes up, he gets between Holland and Russell and just makes a cut to the outside and a missed tackle by the cornerback gets him all the way to Chris Hudson. We see an isolated camera right here. See the little crack that he got through, but that's a, a, a crack that David Thompson can go through. He's a little jitterbug. He's just 5'9", 175 pounds, a freshman out of Oak Mulgee, Oklahoma. And he doesn't need much room to get through. Well, last week he got through plenty. He ran for 155 yards against Kansas. Well, you see Oklahoma State going to be penalized here, but in the first half, David Thompson, seven attempts, seven yards. So, as I mentioned, Colorado keeping him in check very well until that nice gain on the first play that he gets the ball here in the second half. And his numbers look a little better now, 28 sure. yards on the day. It's first and 15 for Oklahoma State after the penalty. Loveland over the middle, complete, no incomplete. The Denson, he had a handle on it, and Dalton Simmons knocked it out of his hands. Nice strip of the ball by Dalton Simmons, number seven for Colorado. See, Denson has to put his jersey back on his pads. We'll see Dalton Simmons coming across, and he'll knock this ball out, as you described, Les. Andy Loveland makes a nice pass, Denson. He's going to have this ball, I believe, for a second, but then Simmons right there with the right hand is able to rake it out of there, and that's good defensive play. Second and 15. A lot of time for Loveland. This time it's complete to Joe Jefferson across midfield. To the CU 48. Oklahoma State throwing the ball. Pretty effectively, Loveland on target. Actually, that's the last play. Chris Lofton, the 6'1", 185-pound freshman. And how many freshmen does Oklahoma State have? They've started seven true freshmen at one time or another during the course of this year. Well, the time they were on probation, they went to the junior college level to bring in a lot of talent because nobody wanted to come here to play. But now they're getting the freshmen back, and they're putting them in the lineup. Loveland overthrows his man. Jefferson incomplete that brings up fourth down OSU will punt
Scott Tyner's been a busy man today. Oklahoma State has had trouble moving the ball. The one touchdown they did score, they started with the ball in CU territory after intercepting Cordell Stewart. So the Buffs defense has done a very good job. Charles Johnson to return the punt. punt by Tyner. CJ lets it go and OSU gets a good bounce. And the ball is down at the CU three yard line. With 12 04 to go third quarter CU leads it by 10. We'll be right back. How do you order Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste during the big game? Say MGD Light and say no more. How do you order a Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste at happy hour. One MGD Light, please. Say MGD Light and say no more. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's the 94 Jeep and Eagle lineup. Drive into the future with special savings on Eagle Vision TSI. Or save up to $17.50 on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo V8. Get into the affordable Summit family for this. Forward thinkers get great deals on Eagle talent. It's some of the most advanced thinking on the road, and it's at your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Who wants now? Reports of the legendary two-footed object have been growing. Anything? Nothing. Must be big. Even Chet seen it. Coming over the hill, sorry. Get the lights, boys! Bigfoot. Bigfoot Pizza, the legendary value from Pizza Hut. With two square feet and a tasty new crust you can't get anywhere else. Or for $10.99. Okay, folks, let's break it up. Ah! Bigfoot Pizza, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Colorado with the ball and a 17-7 lead. The Buffs are pinned back against their own three-yard line. This is Salam. A little breathing room. Gets a couple of yards out of that. Colorado runners also kept in check pretty well in the first half. Salam just had 15 yards on nine carries, only 1.7 yard average. Long gain of only six yards. So there now he's up to 11 and 15. Second and eight for the bus. Condor 11 and 15. Well, we're talking about the leading rusher in the Big Eight, mm -hmm. per game average at least. That time, Salam only a yard. See, I think that's a good example of the speed of Oklahoma State as we talked about Richie Ainsley and how underrated he may be. It looks like Salam's going to have a little room here. And then look at the speed of Ainsley's able to catch him before he actually gets into the open field and it's just a very short game. All those linebackers for Oklahoma State very fast. This crowd getting jacked up so is the OSU defense. They believe if they can hold CU here they can get back into this ball game. Third and seven. Cordell Stewart a wide open right side of the field. He gets the first down up to the 15 yard line. Stewart keeps it around the right side. But it just short of the 15 yards. Boy's great individual effort by Cordell. He wanted CJ on the right side. He was just hand fighting with the cornerback, Miles. So wisely, Cordell says, I can't do anything about it except run. And then look what he does at the end of that play. He just goes right over number 35, Charles Verner, to get the first down. If he had slid there, like he often does, or like quarterbacks often do, he would not have had the first down. Cardinal Stewart having a good day running the ball with 36 yards. Well, that, he is cut out of granite, that guy. Quite a physique. First down for the Buffs at the 15. Stewart intercepted. It was taken away. Intercepted by Werner and then taken away by Charles Johnson. I believe that'll go yeah. down as an interception. I don't know how they're going to put this in the stats officially, but I do know this. It's Colorado's ball. Cordell, look at the duck he throws, and I'm not sure if that ball was tipped, but it certainly was intercepted and then just taken away by Charles Johnson. What presence of mind by the senior 
CJ, we talked about, I think that ball was tipped. We talked about what great athletic ability he has. Look at that. He takes the ball right away from Charles Verner. And CJ and the Buffs get a first down because they recover That's right. an a fumble from an interception. So it is ruled an interception, right. a change and of a, possession, and, a and then a change of possession back, and a fumble, right. right. Verner intercepts it, then he fumbles it to Charles Johnson. So the Buffs recovered the so-called fumble and have a first down again at the 15-yard line. Look at it. From behind, Cordell Stewart is hit. That ball was loose. They're calling it a forward pass. They, yes. they say it's incomplete, that Cordell uh -huh. did put his arm motion forward, tried to pass the ball. I'm not so sure about this one. I think it's Gilden that gets in there once again. We'll watch this from ground level as Cordell, just a little play-action pass. And here comes Eric Hobbs, number 42, the linebacker that gets around Tony Birdie. And does Cordell's arm go forward? Oh, absolutely not. No, that should have been ruled That's a fumble. fumble. I don't know whether to call this exciting or sloppy or boy. On well, the previous play, we had two turnovers on, on one play, and that one, not a turnover, but should have been. Second and ten for the Buffs. The crowd booing loudly. On the option. Rashawn Salam run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. There's a penalty flag down. And it's down in the CU backfield. Yeah, in the area that they may be called for holding. Against That's what the call is going to be. Well, the one good thing that's coming out of this, this crowd seems to have come alive. They were sitting on their hands the first half. This penalty goes against the Buffs, half the distance to the goal line, and will be set down at the eight, the, excuse me, the seven yard line. Well, they started this drive on what, the three yard line? Right. There's been an awful lot of action for four yards of offense so far. <laughs> Hasn't there? <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> Second and 17. Complete to Westbrook. He spins his way to the 21. Well short of the first down, about four yards short. But certainly an important game for Colorado. Gets them out of the shadow of their end zone, the shadow of their own goal post. And Cordell Stewart, see how he looks right and then looks back? And that is just enough to get Hobbs, the linebacker, lean the other way. And he actually got a hand on that ball, just a fingertip before Michael Westbrook calls it in. Down and I think that look to the right actually was enough to hold those linebackers and safeties to complete that pass. Third and a long four for the Buffs with 9.01 to go, third quarter. Complete for the first down. Rashan Salam, the reception. The Buffs have been doing a lot of lining up their running backs at the wideout position. Salam and Lamont yeah. Warren do it quite a bit. Yeah, because they're such good receivers. We talked about how they can do that without changing personnel. And it's very difficult to defend this because now you have five quick receivers, two tight ends, two wide receivers, and now the running back out there. You only have four defensive backs. Very difficult to defend. On first down, Salam tries the middle. Gets it up to the 34. Speaking of tight ends, I don't think... They've thrown to Christian Fourier all day, have no, they? I don't think he has a, a reception. And I consider him one of the best tight ends in the Big Eight, if not the best. When you know, when you look at Colorado's personnel on offense, they're skilled people: quarterback, wide receivers, tight ends, and backs. I think that you look around the country, there's not many better as a group, as a whole, than the skilled people for Colorado. I agree with you. Very talented lot. Second and six. Stewart complete again to Westbrook. They just keep running these little out patterns on OSU. And slowly churning up the field. Well, what happens is the cornerback's got to take the deep third. They're playing a three deep zone, which means the linebacker has to get out into the flat. Well, when you have Michael Westbrook making a quick move like that and the ball delivered on time, there's no way that that linebacker, Eric Hobbs, can get there in time to stop that pass. Michael with five receptions today so far. And that ties his season best. He also had five against Texas. First down for the Buffs at their own 46. 
Going deep. Oh, it's CJ again. Another fantastic catch and a touchdown. He is just incredible. There is a penalty flag down. Now, there's a chance they might call offensive interference here. Let's see what this is. And I think that that would be a bad call. But we'll see as Lamont, or excuse me, as Cordell goes deep, and this ball is underthrown a little bit. Look at that concentration. And Charles Johnson just continues to amaze. It's against, it's against Oklahoma it's State. Yeah. The defensive back, you might have noticed, wasn't even looking for the ball. Got in Charles' way. Charles made the fantastic catch, and it's another CU touchdown. What an athlete. The Buffs will try the extra point when we come back. I'm a CEO of a major corporation. It's a small business. <laughs> okay, it's a pet shop. But I've got a pretty large staff, me and my neighbor. But we're going to be big someday. And to get there, I had to make better use of my time. So I got some help from U.S. West. A wrist pager, cellular phone. Hello? 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 No, I, it's a bird. U.S. West voice messaging, even second line. Ellen said Kingdom. You saw the end the yellow pages. Yes, we do all types of grooming. No, not turtle waxing. Can you hold this my other line? Ellen's pet. Oh, yes, I just got your fax. Right, we match people to pets. And we have the perfect one for you. With all these new time savers from U.S. West, I'm making better use of my time, and business is going great, which gives me more time for entertaining clients. You've got something in your teeth. U.S. West, making the most of your time. When we started business over 40 years ago, we had no idea how successful Home Marie Limited would be. We've always carried the finest merchandise, and our great staff gives our customers personalized service you just can't find another store. Dad always taught me that being a success is more than selling good clothing, it's taking great care of our customers. Maybe it's time you start a clothing tradition in your life. Come in and see us at Home Marie Limited. Home Marie Limited, downtown Denver, Marina Square, and Cherry Creek. The Buffs just go up 24 to 7, and look how they did it. Charles Johnson just going to go on the fly pattern, and it's not bad coverage, but right here, Miles has to look back, or he's going to be called for interference, and that's what they did call against Miles. But again, the concentration by Charles Johnson is just amazing, and he just continues to amaze. While we were gone, Mitch Berger kicked the extra point to make it 24 to 7. Charles Johnson, second touchdown reception of the afternoon, and both have both been of, nothing less oh. than spectacular. And that's been a trademark of his career over the last two years, especially. He had one earlier against Oklahoma on the halfback option pass from Warren. Unbelievable catch on his knees in the end zone. It's like watching Lynn Swan all over again. I agree. Charles Johnson is a senior. He will be. A high draft choice by the NFL. How many do you think he'll go? I think he's a first-round pick. When you see a guy making plays like that, you don't you don't measure speed, hands, every, anything you want to measure. You just measure the ability to make plays like that. It's real simple. He catches the ball and sure. he catches it in traffic. We'll watch this one more time from behind Cordell Stewart as. Uh, Bill McCartney was saying Cordell rarely underthrows the ball, and this is one of those rare occasions when he does, but it doesn't hurt CU as CJ goes up over the top. And just to, for him to get the, his hands on the ball, you know, over top of that defender was amazing in itself. The Buffs go seven plays and 85 yards on that touchdown drive. They lead a 24 to 7 with 8.04 to go in the third quarter. Andy Loveland complete to Raphael Denson. Boy, he can scatter some. Up to the 30-yard line. Close to the first down. He's got good speed. Oklahoma Denson. State, I think, ran a uh, ran a, a really an illegal pick here. Watch the outside receiver go in. He's going to just knock Ronnie Wolfork. See there? He was blocking before that ball was caught when the ball was in the air. That's actually a pick, but not called, and Denson picks up the first down. First and 10, OSU from its own 30. The crowd quieted once again. This is the freshman, Thompson. He gets three yards. 
Alan Wilbon made the tackle. Backup linebacker, a freshman out of Dallas. Look at this. Wow. Kansas State loses to Iowa State 27 23. You can almost see that one coming. It's very tough to go into Ames, Iowa and win anyway after you've had three very, very emotional games as the Wildcats had had or had had. Very tough to go into Ames and win. They don't do it. I wonder if that cost Kansas State. That pass brought down a nice catch by Fred Thomas, a sophomore out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Back to that thought. I wonder if that Kansas State upset cost them a, a New Year's a Day bowl date. Yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt that it may have. And I don't know what is these guys had for breakfast this morning, but receivers from both sides putting on receiving clinics. Look at this. He's saying, well, CJ, you want to go up over top of the defender and pull one in? I can do that, too. And Fred Thomas goes up over Dalton Simmons. Dalton Simmons again, just like his counterpart on the other side, not looking for the ball. OSU at the CU 43-yard line. Forget it. They try in the middle. And the Buffs Shannon Clavel makes sure it goes nowhere. Talked to Shannon Clavel a little bit this week. As he was forced into action last year because of the injury to Jeff Bruner. They wanted to redshirt him a year ago. He had 11 tackles against the Cornhuskers last week. He's really coming into his own as he has been switched from nose tackle out the defensive end. Really likes it out there better. Yeah, Shannon's just a sophomore. Second and 13. Loveland going deep. And overthrows his man, Shannon Culver. On the coverage is Dennis Collier. And they're talking to each other right now. <laughs> a little jawing going on. As a matter of fact, the officials stepping in in front of Dennis Collier say, hey, leave alone. You made a good play. Hey, you can get penalized for that in college for taunting. Air Force beating the Army 25-6. Air Force has had a, a fairly dismal season, but this win allows them to keep the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. It'll stay in the trophy case at the Air Force Academy. Navy beat Air Force, but Air Force beat Army in the round-robin competition. Loveland tries it over the middle again to Shannon. It's, yeah, yes, to Shannon Culver, excuse me. A lot of people thought he was tripped, but the, he was tripped well after the ball was out of reach. I think the crowd might have thought that was pass interference, but as you mentioned, I think that ball was uncatchable anyway. Dalton Simmons again. We've seen this happen a, a number of times today where he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. And look, Shannon Culver isn't even looking for the ball. He's just putting his hands up, hoping that he could draw a pass interference. And that, he needs an Oscar for that. Good dramatics. Fooled this crowd. <laughs> Oklahoma State will punt. Tyner back at his own 39. Charles Johnson to return. Hicks almost got a hand on that. CJ lets it go into the end zone. And the Buffs will get the ball at their own 20. A 24 to 7 lead for CU with 6.05 to go third quarter. Well, remember tomorrow on Channel 4. At 11 a.m., it'll be the Broncos and the Cleveland Browns. Two teams with winning records. CU trying to maintain a winning record, coming into this ballgame at 4-3-1, and, and things look fairly safe right now. Rashawn Salon, the left sideline. Finally dragged down from behind at the 41. Keith Burns got a hold of his shoulder and pulled him out of bounds. They have a tight formation. You see the wide receiver just a few yards off from the tight end. And this is the first time that we saw Salam really get outside the perimeter and go for big yardage up the sideline. And he just outruns the cornerback, but can't outrun Keith Burns. Watch at the big hole as Tony Birdie just seals Eric Hobbs enough to get Salam around the corner. Speaking of enough, we haven't said enough about Tony Burney. And the year he's having at left tackle for the Bucks. Well, I'll talk about him on that play because it wasn't Burney. <laughs> well, they didn't run his way. They ran it up the middle. Yeah, but his man made the tackle. 
He has been. We asked Bill McCartney yesterday, you know, to, to really point out the lineman that he thought he was having the best year, and he immediately said Tony Birdie, the guy who actually came here to play defense, uh, started the career, his career as a center, and now has moved to tackle. You know what his real name is? His real name is Charles. Why does he go by Tony? I have no idea. Well, have it in for you next game, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that pass incomplete. Well, what makes Tony Birdie so good is his quickness. Very quick. He runs like a 4-7. That's unbelievable for an offensive lineman. And that man, Cordell Stewart, Bill McCartney had some comments on him, said he cannot believe the talent that that young man has. He is just so talented, but he just needs to, to learn the position the quarterback position and all the intricacies that go with playing quarterback in a passing offense. Remember, he came to see you as a wishbone quarterback, and he still hasn't developed those instincts to thrive in the passing game. Even though he set records last year, school records, he still has a ways to go. On third and ten, complete to Fourier. The first catch of the day by the CU tight end. He's across midfield, and they'll move the chains. It's a first down for the Buffs. Christian Fourier, he'll be on the left side. He's just going to slip out to the left into the flat. Cordell looks right, comes back left, and Christian was just standing there wide open, and he makes a nice cut inside to pick up some extra yardage, but it probably seemed like an eternity that he was standing there waiting for that ball to reach him. Less than five minutes to go, third quarter. See you at the ball at the OSU 49. This is Salam with a nice hole. Fumbles the ball, but it goes out of bounds before anybody can fall on it. And it'll be marked at the 41-yard line of OSU. A gain of eight. OSU player down. Here's Rashawn. He's going to take the handoff. We mentioned he was playing eight-man football in high school. Nice block by Heath Irwin that got him into the backfield. And then, boy, that ball popped out. I didn't realize that was... Uh, out as early as it was but here's Salam coming right into your living room as they say boom that ball's popped right out of there by number 36 Scott Harmon fortunate bounce for the buffs it was Scott Harmon who was injured and on the field and now he's up and walking off on his own Harmon a senior out of Harmony Oklahoma both his parents are Oklahoma State alumni. So he didn't really have a choice. No. He had to come to school. Here. It sounds that way, doesn't it? <laughs> Ball marked at the Oklahoma State 42. So it'll be second and three. After the run by Rashawn Salam. Two wide receivers in the game, both lined up to the right, and Stewart's looking for one of them. He's got CJ who's still on his feet and finally knocked down at the 36. That's another first down. The strength of Cordell Stewart's arm is what gets this ball here. The strength of his arm is unbelievable. He's throwing on the run. We'll see CJ just do a little out pattern. Now look how long he's waiting for it. Cordell's really a little late getting the ball there, but he can throw it so hard he gets it in front of the defensive back. The strong safety, Charles Werner, is able to come up with or CJ is able to come up with the catch. Seven catches today for a whopping 160 yards for Charles. First down, ball is loose. Cordell Stewart falls on it. CU will retain it at the 42. A loss of seven. Watch this from ground level. There's some penetration from Oklahoma State. That's Cleavon Williams, defensive back, the cornerback, coming on a blitz. And I think that's kind of a run blitz that they just bring that guy off the corner to stop that perimeter move by the offensive back and be able to knock the ball out of there. Again, a fortunate bounce. Two times on this drive, fortunate bounces for Colorado, giving the ball back on fumbles. Cleavon Williams with a nice defensive play, and the Buffs are staring at second and 17. Another good rush put on by Keith Burns, and he gets the sack on Cordell Stewart. Sends the Buffs back into their own territory. That'll bring up fourth and long, and the Buffs will have to punt. Keith Burns is going to get his first sack of the year. We talked about him as a Butkus candidate, and 
how good he is just making tackles, but here's his first sack of the year. He just comes right around on the stunt, untouched, and gets Cordell Stewart. My fault. Burns did that on second down. That brings up third and very long. Third and 25. Well, they might as well punt, huh? Yeah. <laughs> No, no, actually, hey, not with those wide receivers. Broncos used to do that. We'd let John come back and pooch it. Third down. Buffs trying the safe route. Rashawn Salam almost breaks it down to the 40-yard line. And now I believe they'll have to punt. Mitch Berger coming out onto the field. Berger back at his own 45, shielding his eyes from the sun. This is an odd field. It faces east and west. Yeah. Right now, Berger facing west where the sun is going down. Most fields run north-south. Berger a little too much leg into that one. He puts it through the end zone. So Oklahoma State will have the ball at its own 20. We've got 2.45 to go in the third. The Buffs lead it by 17. Bigfoot Pizza, the legendary value from Pizza Hut, with two square feet and a tasty new crust you can't get anywhere else, all for $10.99. Okay, well, let's break it up. Ah! Bigfoot Pizza, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. How do you order a Miller Genuine Draft Light, the cold filtered light with smooth draft taste, in a pool hall? MGD Light? MGD Light. They say no more. How do you order a Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste at a singles bar. Give me an MGD Light. Anyone have change for 20? We'll let him in here. Say MGD Light and say no more. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's the 94 Jeep and Eagle lineup. Drive into the future with special savings on Eagle Vision TSI. Or save up to $17.50 on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo V8. Get legendary Wrangler for a price like this. Save over $1,100 on select Cherokee sports with air at no charge. It's some of the most advanced thinking on the road, and it's at your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Well, after the CU punt, Oklahoma State with the ball. Down by 17 from their own 20-yard line. Loveland to throw. Incomplete on the coverage. Dennis Collier. That pass intended for Rafael Denson. Andy Loveland actually started his career at Colorado State. 1990, played for Earl Bruce for a year. He's just a scout team quarterback for the Rams and transferred out after that freshman year. Went to a junior college, had a great year. Throwing for over 3,000 yards and then transferred here to Oklahoma State. Pat Jones watching his team trying to get back into this ball game. On second and ten, Loveland complete. And up to the 30 yard line goes the tight end, Derek Jones. He's been more and more a part of their offense in the last few weeks as their tight end. He's just going to delay a little bit, come over the middle. Kerry Hicks gets a hand on him, but he gets a couple of yards, nice yardage before Ted Johnson's able to bring him down. Derek Jones, big kid, 6'3", 255. He's a junior. Keeps playing like this. He'll get a look by NFL scouts. Third and one. That's Boogie Johnson, and he has first down yardage up to the 32. Well, going back to uh, that shot of Pat Jones we had, the Oklahoma State head coach, they, they've got a pretty rich coaching tradition here at OSU. Jimmy Johnson used to be here before he went on to Miami, built those national championship teams, and then on to the Dallas Cowboys where he won a Super Bowl. You know who was an assistant coach here? In, when? Oh, back in the early 70s. No, who? A couple of familiar names. Wade Phillips. Oh, no, that's true. An assistant coach here at Oklahoma State, and so is his dad, Bum. Wade was here in 73 and 74. That pass from Loveland incomplete. 
Again, he was going for the tight end Jones. Pat Jones is the all-time winningest coach at Oklahoma State. That happened, what, four or five games ago against TCU. As a matter of fact, that's the last time Oklahoma State has won a ball game when he became the, act, uh, the winningest coach in Oklahoma State history, did Pat Jones, but they have not won since. So actually, we have each coach on the sideline is the Best winningest in coach history. in his respective school. Second and ten for OSU. Up the middle goes Spatz, the fullback. That might be his first carry of the afternoon. He's a little short of the first down. Ronnie Wolfork made the tackle. Spatz is a, is a blocker. He doesn't get to touch the ball all that often, so when he does, it's, it's exciting for, for that young man. 6'2", 230. Big man, good blocker. A little too exciting for the Buffs. He gets a few yards out of that, and that brings up third and three. And Andy Loveland wants to go talk it over with the coach on the sideline, so OSU calls a timeout. 59 seconds to go, third quarter. Colorado leads it 24 to 7. Well, a couple of things CU would like to remind you of. The football senior banquet is Monday, November 22nd. It's at the Denver Convention Center, downtown Denver. And for reservations, if you care to go, 492-5497. And then, you know, the basketball season is starting on campus. CU men and women getting underway. Joe Harrington and Seal Berry been running their teams through practice the last couple of weeks. If you want tickets to any of those ball games, dial 492-8377. It's not that cold, is it? I think that's his real hair. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> what kind of animal? That looks like a live animal. <laughs> Colorado cheerleaders made the trip. They've had a lot to cheer about today. A 24-7 CU lead. Andy Loveland and Oklahoma State looking at third and three from their own 39-yard line. A good rush put on by Sam Rogers, and that forces Loveland into a bad throw. Fourth down, and OSU will have to punt. Loveland wanted to go back to his tight end, a little tight end screen, but just uh, too much pressure from Sam Rogers. You have to let those guys come through on a screen or a throwback, but number 20, Joe Jefferson, was charged with trying to get a hat on Sam Rogers, but Joe Jefferson at 5'10", 190. A little mismatch there against Sam Rogers. Charles Johnson to return. He's looking into the sun, so this could prove to be a bit difficult. Another good kick from Tyner. Boy, he unloaded on that one. And Charles does the smart thing. He lets the ball bounce into the end zone, so CU will have it at the 20. You're right. That was a smart play by CJ. because He was not standing on the 10-yard line as you normally do when you're receiving a punt in your own end zone or your own end of the field. And does that man look a little dejected or is it just me? Looks like he's trying to figure out a way to get his team back into this ball game. They're stymied on offense. Yeah, he's, a, he's a guy that really does wear his emotions on his sleeve. He's, he doesn't hide. He's a very honest man. Uh, very, uh, very glib with the media and with fans. And they love him here. It doesn't matter what kind of record he has. They love him. I always thought when he wore that baseball cap, he looked like Lou Holtz's twin brother. <laughs> First and ten for the Buffs. They try the left side. Lamont Warren, who hasn't carried the ball much today, doesn't go very far there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. The way they're marking it, it's a loss of one. Some more Buffs fans who made the trip. Well worth it, huh, guys? 24 to 7, the Buffs lead as the third quarter winds down. Less than 20 seconds to go. Second and 11 for Cordell Stewart and CU. A good rush put on. Cordell hit as he throws the ball. Incomplete. Third pass. Falls incomplete. 
Charles Werner putting the pressure on number 35 there in the middle of the screen. Along with the linebacker, 44, Keith Burns. He and Ronnie Wolfork still in the running for the Butkus Award, which goes to the best college linebacker in the nation. Of any of the four Big Eight finalists, I think that Burns and Wolfork are probably the least likely to actually win that award. We have Beavers and Beavers and Trev, and, Alberts. And Trev Alberts, and I would say Trev Alberts would be the leading candidate from the Big Eight. He was very impressive last week. Very cool customer on the field for Nebraska, too. Cordell Stewart is complete to the tight end Fourier. And that last effort might have earned them a first down. Although the mark isn't very charitable, it looks like they're going to have a short one yard to go on fourth down. We're going to take a break here in Stillwater as the third quarter expires. Buffs lead it by 17. The first time, Rocky Balboa went the distance. It's one thing I want you to do. What are we waiting for? Now he's going beyond the distance. Go through him. Run over him. Two rivals face to face. Fist to fist. Sylvester Stallone, Talia Shire, Carl Weathers, Burgess Meredith, Rocky II. Monday night at 7 on Denver's TV 20. Is it out finished? How's it going? Great. We have a lot of good mechanics that shop at AutoZone. We also have a lot of people who just want to save some money by doing a simple job themselves, like changing their oil or putting in new plugs. They just want to come in, get what they need, and get out. Well, at AutoZone, we have parts for just about every car made. So if you know what you want, great. But if you're not quite sure about something, no problem. We'll help. After all, that's what we're here for. Oh, man. Yeah. It's your swing. Yeah. Hey, how'd you swing the Grand Prix? I thought you were getting the Taurus. Well, that was before I checked out the Grand Prix. Oh. Fact is, Grand Prix is the most affordable midsize sedan with a V6, anti-lock brakes, and dual airbags. Really? With the Pontiac three-year smart drive, it was only $239 a month. Wow. I wish I could drive like that. Get a Grand Prix. Today's game is brought to you by Rider Rangers by McDonald's and by Miller Genuine Draft Light. Les Shapiro. Les Shapiro and Jim Ryan back with you in Stillwater for the start of the final quarter. CU leading Oklahoma State 24 to 7. The Buffs with the ball on fourth down and Mitch Berger is in the punt. And he's punted quite a bit today. Both defenses dominating this game. The difference Charles Johnson two spectacular catches. Four touchdowns. Mitch Berger puts it on the ground. Scott Harmon tries to run it back. Doesn't get very far, and OSU will have the ball at the 27. Lewis Field in Stillwater. They've been playing here since 1913. Some scores from around the Big Eight. Oklahoma beats Missouri in Missouri. Where do you see the next two? We'll get to them, but I'll tell you this. Nebraska beat Kansas by one point, and Kansas State lost. Kansas State loses to them. Loveland from off his back foot. Incomplete. Incomplete out of bounds. Intended for number 22, Romeo Denson. Well, here are those scores I was telling you about. The Huskers, a one-point winner over unranked Kansas. That could cost the Huskers in the national rankings. And Kansas State loses to Iowa State, 27 to 23. So Kansas State will probably fall below CU in the Big Eight standings. If CU holds on. Second and ten. Flag on the field. That ball picked off by Collier. Picked off by CU's Dennis Collier back at his own 39-yard line. Let's see what the flag is about, though. I think it's going to be against the Cowboys. See who's going to get the ball back. So Dennis Collier with his fourth interception of the year. Not bad for a kid who used to be a running back yeah. up until last season. Great speed. He's been playing very well all 
season long, and they seem to have gone away from him and tried the other side a lot more today and the other teams in the last few weeks, and this is why because he's got great coverage and not an especially well-thrown ball by Andy Loveland, but Dennis Collier going up and showing good hands to bring that ball in. And made a good adjustment, turning from the left to the right to nap that ball. And look at this. Doesn't bode well for the Cowboys. Have not scored, as Mark McIntosh pointed out at the top of the broadcast, have not scored a single point in the fourth quarter all season. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. They've played eight games and have not scored in the fourth. On the end reverse, this is CJ. Whirled out of bounds at the OSU 42 yard line. Charles Verner finally caught up to him. Well, you see Lamont Warren and Cordell Stewart looking like they're going to run the option, and then Cordell just gives it on to Charles Johnson on the end around. He's got a lot of green turf in front of him. And he was trying to set up a block by Derek West. See Derek West down there? CJ was trying to set up his block, and it bought enough time for number 35, Werner, to come over and make the play. The, the neat thing about this play, you would think that Cornell Stewart might still be pitching to the tailback. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, how they try to time that up. First down, Lamont Warren. Down to the 40-yard line, a gain of two. Colorado has not really been able to put together a tremendously sustained drive throughout this whole ball game. Two of their touchdowns coming on outstanding catches by Charles Johnson. And, and really, they've moved the ball okay, but not to, like they have in the past. You know, this is a team that number one in the Big Eight in total offense and number 10 in the nation. They've just not moved the ball with a lot of consistency. Every time they've gotten something going, Oklahoma State's been able to answer. Second and eight. Cordell incomplete for Michael Westbrook. Michael Westbrook might have been looking into the sun on that. It was a very difficult pass to bring in. And not to make excuses for that young man. He's a tremendous receiver, but maybe not the complete receiver that some were led to believe by his numbers last year. Uh, a couple of coaches said, uh, very good player, but he's still developing, and that's almost scary because he's so good right now, and they say he's still got a lot to learn. He needs to learn a little bit more about catching the downfield pass, and boy, when, when he learns that, how good will he be? Third and eight. Lamont Warren. Back to the line of scrimmage. Back to Westbrook for a second. That is probably why Michael will stay in school for his senior year, because he realizes mm -hmm. he needs to become a more well-rounded wide receiver. Well, I think a lot of people are thinking that Michael Westbrook's having a very down year, and I don't think that's necessarily true, because they're not throwing to him nearly as much. In the offense they had last year, he was the slot. He was always the hot receiver if there was a blitz, and that's why he got a lot of balls thrown to him. He's not in that situation anymore. 76 six catches mm -hmm. last year he came into today with just 23 burger to punt looking for the corner can't find it though and that ball bounds into the end zone so Oklahoma State will start with it looking at 80 yards and also looking at a 24 to 7 deficit how can you ride the bus for free relax on your way to work and improve the air Ask your company to provide EcoPass. EcoPass is RTD's reduced price annual bus pass that companies buy for their employees. With it, Rider Rangers provides a guaranteed free taxi ride home in case of an emergency. Call this number for details about EcoPass. And the guaranteed ride home. Brought to you by RTD, Rider Rangers, and News 4. I was tired, listless. My hair looks bad. My dog moved away. My life is as bland as your average chicken sandwich. Then I tried McDonald's new McGrilled Chicken. Now this was different. A marinated chicken breast with Monterey Jack, sweet red onions, tangy herb dressing on a bakery roll. Well, things changed. My hair looks great. My dog came home and we struck oil in the backyard. Coincidence? We don't think so. Try the new McGrilled Chicken Sandwich. Further proof that what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. How do you order a Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste in a pool hall? MGD Light? Say MGD Light and say no more. How do you order Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste at a rock and roll club? 
Give me an MGD life. Say MGD life and say no more. 12.59 to go, fourth quarter. CU leading 24 to 7. And Oklahoma State with the ball from its own 20. Get straight ahead to number 23. That's Boogie the Johnson freshman. The 16, Matt Russell on the Darryl Johnson. The squeaks out about three yards. Andy Loveland, frankly, does not have the arm to bring Oklahoma State back in this fourth quarter. Well, he's smart, he's fairly accurate, but the type of throws that he's very good at are not ones that lend itself to quick scores. And that's what Oklahoma State needs right now, down by 17. But they're sticking with him. On second and three, that ball almost picked off. It was right into the gut of Ronnie Wolfork, and he's probably pretty angry with himself right now. It was almost as if he was the intended receiver. Yeah, Ronnie's not come up with a lot of big plays in the last few weeks, so he has a chance to make one here, and the ball slips through his hand, so he's not feeling too good about that. But as you say, he's trying to go to his tight end, but Ronnie was uh, in better position than anybody else on the field to make the catch. former quarterback on the airport. Third and seven. Loveland going for Chris Lofton. Loveland's pass and out of That'll bring up fourth down. Let's see what Senate Oklahoma State eight, does here. Down by 17. I would imagine they'll punt. Thinking there's still plenty of time left. Yeah, neither team really, as we mentioned, Colorado not moving the ball all that effectively. They've got 349 yards of total offense, but on the other side, Oklahoma State not doing anything offensively Go either. Just kind of going back and forth, and no one really breaking free for much yardage offensively. Scott Tyner to kick it. Charles Johnson lets it bounce, and it goes OSU's way, and will be down at the CU 28-yard line. So here are your stats through three quarters. Buffs pretty well dominating in every category except for yards rushing. 349 total yards for the Buffs. Almost half of them. Put up on the board by Charles Johnson. He is the story of this game with two unbelievable touchdown catches. 150 yards receiving and 19 yards on the reverse. Really, two catches he had no right making. Mm -hmm. Defenders all over him. One of the balls he tipped up into the air to himself. Cordell Stewart pitches the ball. To Rashawn Salam, and he gets it back to the line of scrimmage. And again, a first down play that doesn't net a whole lot of yardage. Colorado just seems in the second half to be kind of walking through this, and I'm not saying they're not playing hard, but just offensively cannot get anything going, defensively playing very well. See Mitch Berger is preparing for yet another punt if it comes to that. Second and ten. Cordell going deep. Almost picked out of the air by Michael Westbrook. Looked like the man with the best chance of catching that was G2 Criddle, freshman redshirt until Westbrook stepped up. We talk about him needing to develop the downfield catch. Now, here's the difference of the type of year that he and Charles Johnson are having. Charles Johnson making two outstanding catches. Good coverage by the defensive back. Michael comes up over, makes the athletic move, but just isn't able to bring that ball in. Very difficult catch. I'm not saying he should have made the catch, but he has a chance when he gets the ball, gets his hands on the ball, but nice play by the defender to get his left hand in there. On third and nine, Westbrook with the wide receiver screen, still on his feet, could go all the way. Michael Westbrook. And in for the touchdown. Charles Werner had the angle on him, but Westbrook, with that deceptive speed, goes in for the score. This is what the coaches do love about this guy. We talked about him developing the ability to catch the ball downfield. Well, when you can catch it and then do this after a short pass, you don't need to catch it downfield. You can still score touchdowns. He makes a nice move and breaks a tackle, and then he breaks into the clear. And 
His speed takes him the rest of the way into the corner of the end zone. And now, you see a, a, a Oklahoma State player hurt. This has turned into the Charles Johnson and Michael Westbrook show. That's the beauty of having athletes like that, especially two guys with that kind of speed. If you get them the short pass, you're not hoping for just an eight or ten yard game. Yeah. Each one of them can break it. Not only time. speed, but strength. And that's what Michael Westbrook shows here. Watch. He breaks one tackle right there. Actually, he almost breaks it twice, up high and then down low. Hobbs had him, and then he makes the nice cut to get outside. So it's not just speed, but the combination of strength and speed. And then watch here. Werner hits him. Michael just kicked it up one gear and yeah. strolls into the end zone. Hobbs has him right here, and he makes a mistake of not wrapping up enough. And he gets some good downfield blocking. Birdie getting in the way of Harmon there. And you're right, at the very end of this play, Werner gives him a shot, but Michael seemed to just shrug it off like it wasn't even there. Mitch Berger, the extra point attempt. Berger's extra point is uh, it's there. Good. And we'll keep it right here with 11 minutes to go in the ballgame. Colorado with a 31 to 7 lead. Well, with the Kansas State loss, the Buffs will move into sole possession of second place in the Big Eight, behind only Nebraska. Nebraska squeaking out a 21 to 20 win today over Kansas. Will go to 5 and 0 in conference, and the Buffs will up their record to 3 1 and 1. They're not mathematically eliminated from the Big Eight title chase. However, it doesn't look likely that Nebraska will lose its final two games. And Colorado has to win its final two. Right. That's exactly what Bill McCarthy was telling us about. Everybody's yeah. counting on them winning their final three, except for him. Yeah. Everybody else has already chalked those up. Pat Jones shaking his head a little bit, talking to himself. By the way, CU's final two games come against Kansas. That one's in Boulder next week. And then they go on the road for the season finale against Iowa State. Iowa State team which pulled off the upset against Kansas State today. Right, here's an amazing stat for you as Berger gets ready to kick off. Of CU's total 442 yards Michael Westbrook and Charles Johnson have accounted for 302 of those yards. This is Denson, and he gets it up to the 22-yard line for OSU. See Michael Westbrook coming right at you, ground level. How would you like to have to try to chase him down and catch him? Watch, he just ignores. He actually starts trotting at about the 10-yard line, thinking that he's in. Werner had a shot, but Michael just ignored that diving attempt. Three plays, 73 yards. It's been quick strike capability for the Buffs today. Yeah, hasn't been anything sustained. I don't think anybody will complain about that. If you can score quickly, you'll <laughs> take it every time, especially when you're going against a team like Oklahoma State. You can give them 10 chances, 12 chances with the ball all day, and they might score once, maybe twice. Yeah, it's right. a weak offense over at Oklahoma Johnson. State. Yeah, not a good offense and a good Gate defense. And that's, I think, why Colorado has not been able to sustain anything because they are so fast on defense, but they have been able to come up with the big play. In a quarterback for the Cowboys with the 14 in a quarterback for Oklahoma State now is Mark Wilson. We saw him in the first quarter, but haven't seen him since. Wilson escapes the rush. Gets out of bounds to the 26, a gain of three. A lot of work for just three yards. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to belabor the point about Ronnie Wolfork, who has not made a lot of big plays. He's got to be thinking, now, what do I have to do? I got this guy in my sights. I got my hands on his hips around him, and I can't bring him down. And I'm sure it's very frustrating for Ronnie, who's just an outstanding player. I had had a shot at him, too, and couldn't corral him. Three-yard game, third down and six. 
Wilson is a junior out of Upland, California. Has not thrown a pass on the Division I level. He's much better scrambling, as you saw right there. First down yardage. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. The Buffs, I think, have bittersweet emotions about the fact Kansas State lost today. In all likelihood, the Buffs will probably finish in second place in the Big 8, which means they will probably go to the Hancock Bowl. In a season that has been marked by disappointments, four blemishes on their record, the guys were looking forward to possibly a trip to Hawaii and the Aloha Bowl. That won't happen probably if they finish in second, but go to the Hancock Bowl. Back to you guys. And there is a Hancock Bowl representative here today, Steve DeGroote, who said he'd be happy to have CU. As long as CU has a 7-3-1 record, as long as the Buffs went out. And, you know, it is good and bad. It is bittersweet, as Mark said. You might not get a trip to Hawaii, but the school does make an extra $400,000 in the Hancock Bowl. The payout there is $1.1 million. The Aloha pays out just $700,000. We're going to take a break in Stillwater with 9.39 to go. CU well out in front. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's the 94 Jeep and Eagle lineup. Drive into the future with special savings on Eagle Vision TSI. Or save up to $17.50 on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo V8. Get into the affordable Summit family for this. Forward thinkers get great deals on Eagle talent. It's some of the most advanced thinking on the road, and it's at your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Chances are, you'd expect to find a business banker in a bank. But you might not expect to find one discussing business on a ranch or engaged in conversation at a local ski resort. In fact, there's no telling where you'll find a Norwest business banker conducting business. But then they figure, before they can begin to help people in the business community, they have to be part of it. you through your day. No. You need coffee. It's the liquid alarm clock. Herbs, spices, and tea leaves blend together to make delicious flavors. Right, Mo. Gotta have beans. Pure and simple. It helps others wake up to a brighter day. It makes you feel warm inside. Back in Stillwater, CU comfortably ahead of Oklahoma State, 31 to 7. Approaching the nine minute mark left in this game. And it's second and five for Oklahoma State. They're at their own 42. Loveland back in the ball game, complete to Fred Thomas. Mark Wilson was a quarterback for Oklahoma State. Got shaken up a bit after a scramble, and Loveland, who started the game, is back in now. It's got to be frustrating for Mark Wilson. Finally gets a chance to get some playing time. Gets about two plays, and he's in, he's in there somewhere behind those trainers. Another junior college transfer, just like Andy Loveland. Third and one. The hurdle gets them the first down. That was Roger Franks, the fullback, and he was hurt as he came down. Came down pretty hard after he went up in the air. He's limping some. Let's take a look. What a big man Roger Franks is. He's tried to hurdle. Look at that. That's a pretty good hurdle right there, but when he comes down, he comes down on his right leg, and he's hit simultaneously by Ted Johnson, so it might be his right ankle or right knee that got Roger Franks there. Picked up the first down. OSU now at the Buffs 48-yard line. This is the freshman, David Thompson. Across the 45. Colorado substituting a little bit right now. As you see Kyle Smith in the ball game, Brian Diet in the ball game, Jeff Bruner out at cornerback uh, Darren Tadlock. But you know, this is a team that has not gone very deep into its roster in its first eight games. And it's a team that's been very, very healthy. In the course of eight games, they've only had two guys miss starts because of injury. Second and seven. Loveland going deep. 
Almost intercepted by Dalton Simmons. The intended receiver was Fred Thomas. They have been picking on Dalton quite a bit yeah. today. Royce Young, sophomore. He was beaten on the pass play, as we mentioned last week, by Corey Dixon. And But uh, as I mentioned, in his defense, if he needs defense, they've been putting him out on an island a lot. A lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage with no help. And that's very difficult to do. You're going to get burned sometimes. But I think Dalton Simmons has come up with a lot of nice plays and another one right there on that last one. Did a very good job today. He's part of that Marrero, Louisiana pipeline, along with Vance Joseph and Cordell Stewart, two quarterbacks. Loveland keeps it and gets inside the 40, a gain of six but he'll be just about a yard short of the first down. And another player down on the field, another Oklahoma State Cowboy. Cowboys are a team that have been hurt by injuries. They've had a number of nicks and bumps and bruises. Not a lot of guys have been lost for the year, but they've had a lot of injuries that have caused people to miss playing time. They have started... 37 different players, 22 offensively. I believe the man down is the tight end, Derek Jones. Fourth rank Miami, an easy winner over Pittsburgh. There's a good one in Tennessee. Who do you like in the big game next week? Which Notre big game is that? Notre Dame, Florida State. I like Florida State. I know it's in South Bend. I just think Florida State has phenomenal talent better than anybody in the nation. Well, you know where Lou Holtz got his coaching uh, started, his coaching career started, don't you? No. Yes. William and Mary. You did not know that. I, I did not know that. <laughs> Jim Ryan's alma mater. William and Mary, his first head coaching job. Fourth down, OSU's going for it. They have to. And they've got it. First down, Oklahoma State. Well, look at this. Oh. Our buddy Dave Logan in a shootout with Bear Creek. That's why he's not here with us today. The Arvada West Wildcats, a winner over Bear Creek. So the A-West Wildcats will be going on to the state playoffs. Congratulations to Dave and everybody at Arvada West. Mm -hmm. Way to go, Coach. Now Dave hops a plane, and we meet up in Cleveland for the Broncos game tomorrow. Mark Wilson back in at quarterback. Playing musical quarterbacks here on OSU. Wilson runs the option better than Loveland does and picks up a couple of yards right there. And you might be wondering why they go to a, a Mark Wilson who is really a runner, not a thrower. Andy Loveland has been pretty ineffective, and I don't think that Pat Jones has any designs on making any kind of comeback with 640 to go down 31 to 7. He's just trying to get out without any more damage, so to speak. Trying to run some time off the clock. Second and five for OSU. This is the fullback, Spatz. And he's inside the 25. This is about the best drive we've seen all day from OSU. Well, well Colorado's probably very content to allow them to run the ball. And if they get a few yards here and there, we just make the tackle, make a short tackle. Nothing big. Mark Wilson has his plays written down on his towel. Now, there's a novel idea. Huh? Not real familiar with the offense. He started out on the scout team this year. He was fourth on the depth chart, and all of a sudden, he's getting playing time. Well, that's what happens when you have injuries like they've had to Tony Jones, their freshman. And then when Pat Jones had to suspend Gary Porter, who has had a number of discipline problems since he came to Oklahoma State. And Pat Jones, as a matter of fact, I was here doing a game last week against Kansas, uh, Oklahoma State and Kansas, and as we walked in to meet with Pat Jones, the first thing that happened was, well, I just had to can my quarterback because uh, he had just come five minutes earlier from suspending Gary Porter, his starting quarterback. Porter thinking about transferring now. He hasn't said where. He just wants out. That's David Thompson. It's one yard. That'll bring up third and six. Well, the bus came in ranked 23rd, assuming some teams in front of them will fall in the rankings. The Buffs ought to move up a notch or two, which would make them more attractive to some bowl committees. Mm -hmm.
Third and six from the CU 20 yard line. From behind, Sam Rogers grabs Wilson at the ankles and forces him into a bad throw. Well, the two outside linebackers combined for a nice play. Ronnie Wolfork coming from the blind side of Mark Wilson to run him right into the arms of Sam Rogers and causing the incompletion, a near sack for that man, number 19. Again, very impressed with the way he's been able to play all year long. What a tradition CU has developed at that outside uh -huh. linebacker spot. Chad Brown getting his first start tomorrow for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alfred Williams, Canavis McGee over the last five, six years. And Sam Rogers had to win a hotly contested battle in fall drills with Daryl Price and Greg Jones even to earn that other outside linebacking starting position opposite Ronnie Wolfork. So CU, even when they lose Sam Rogers, don't think that they're going to have a, a drop off in talent. They've got a couple guys that can step in and play. Five yard penalty against Oklahoma State brings up fourth and six. Check that, fourth and 11. Wilson to throw, looking into the end zone. Fred Thomas, touchdown, OSU. Mark Wilson's first touchdown pass as a collegian. Well, Fred Thomas and Dalton Simmons have been going at it all day, and we've mentioned it before that Dalton has had him man to man, and this time Fred Thomas wins the battle. Dalton right there, just a step behind. He gets his left hand up, but just not in time to knock that one away. Lawson Vaughn is on for the extra point attempt. Oklahoma State burns a timeout here. It looks like they only had 10 men on the field, Jim. Here comes another cowboy running on. What a place to waste a timeout. Yeah. Huh? Well, well 4, 442 to go, and you're about to kick the uh, field goal. You're still going to be down, what, 17 points? Still got a long way to go to come back, so I don't know if the timeout's really going to matter all that much. Shannon Culver taking a rest on the Oklahoma State sideline. Austin Vaughn getting ready to kick the extra point. And it's there. And the score now in Stillwater, 31-14, the Colorado Buffaloes. We'll come right back. I was tired, listless. My hair looked bad. My dog moved away. My life was as bland as your average chicken sandwich. Then I tried McDonald's new McGrilled Chicken. Now this one was different. Marinated chicken breast with Monterey Jack, sweet red onion, tangy herb dressing on a bakery roll. Well, things changed. My hair looks great. My dog came home and we struck oil in the backyard. Coincidence? <laughs> we don't think so. Try the new McGrilled Chicken Sandwich. Further proof that what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. How do you order Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste? During the big game, say MGD Light and say no more. How do you order a Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste at a singles bar. Give me an MGD Light. Anyone have change for 20? We'll let him in here. Say MGD Light and say no more. What do you think about warehouse prices on 94 Toyotas? You'll cause a panic. Where's my say? What do you think? I love this price. The warehouse discount daily on 94 Toyotas. I love this price. You'll love the daily discount price on 94 4x4 trucks. Just $199 a month. Only at Douglas Toyota, the Toyota warehouse. 94 4x4 is only $199 a month. I love this price. You love this price. Take 104th Avenue west of I-25. Douglas Toyota, the Toyota warehouse. You'll love this price. Oklahoma State just scored to make it a 31-14 CU lead. We have 4.42 to go in the ballgame. Lawson Vaughn to kick off. 
That ball fielded by James Kidd. He'll down it. The bus will take it from their own 20. Let's take another look at that OSU touchdown, Jim. Well, Mark Wilson, not only is this his first uh, touchdown pass of his career, but his first completion ever at Oklahoma State, and he does it in a pretty radical way. And there you have it. The Cowboys score for the first time in 1993. A nice drive, their best drive of the afternoon. Ten plays, 80 yards. Bus will try and do the same right now with Vance Joseph at quarterback. In his first play, he is put down by Jason Gilden. Excuse me, Javon Langford, the sack. Langford's had a pretty active afternoon in the Colorado backfield. This time he comes free. Vance Joseph's just going to try to roll to his right, but there's not a, no nothing doing there as Javon Langford makes an outstanding play. And Vance Joseph holds fond memories of this field two years ago when the Buffs had that comeback win. Look at this. Wisconsin wow. beating Ohio State in the fourth quarter. Are they unbelievable? The Badgers? What a year. Back to Vance Joseph a couple of years ago when CU was losing to Oklahoma State. He came on in relief of Darian Hagan. Had some incredible escapes. Running the ball, getting the passes off, and set up a great finish where Robbie James, the holder on a field goal attempt, stood up with the ball and threw it to Christian Fourier for the winning score. And the Buffs escaped against a winless Oklahoma State. Yeah, that would have been the most embarrassing thing about CU losing there. That was, or here, I should say, Oklahoma State did not win a game that year, 0-10 and 1. But Vance Joseph, he's he's really a leader on this team, even though he's a backup quarterback. I think the offense has a whole lot of confidence in that young man. He has, in, in 1991, the year that you refer to, he came in and, and engineered 21 drives. 13 of them ended up in scores. Uh, that's a pretty good percentage for a backup quarterback. Here are your updated Big 8 standings now, assuming Colorado wins, and that's a pretty safe assumption. The Buffs have sole possession of second place behind Nebraska. Vance Joseph, Joseph is a very talented young man. He just got caught in a numbers game. James Hill, his first carry of the afternoon from Widefield High School in Colorado Springs. Like I said earlier, Colorado so talented at skill positions. I mean, look at James Hill. He's a player that would play a whole lot more, maybe even start for a whole lot of college programs. As he goes to the left side, he gets around Burns and gets into the defensive backfield for a nice game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. When James Hill gets a chance to play, he does very well. 99 yards rushing in the opener against Texas. Mm -hmm. He's a load, too. He, he had a great game in the Fiesta Bowl. Uh -huh. He runs a little bit more like a fullback. It makes a former position, but he has the speed to play tailback, too. James again. You're right. That speed found that hole there, and the speed might carry him to the end zone. Into OSU territory. Down to the 42, there's a flag on the field. There's also a CU buff down on the field, back, way back at the 10-yard line. Well, the penalty is going to go against the buffs. And Oklahoma State player. It's Fred Pemberton, an offensive lineman. Normally an offensive lineman. Here you see Vance Joseph is they're working on the Oklahoma State player. Vance Joseph, less of you remember, in 1992 really was in the hunt to be the starting quarterback. And there was a little competition between he and Cordell. And, and really the deciding factor, uh, remembering back in the fall of 1992, was the rotator cuff injury to Vance Joseph. And, and really he could not throw the ball as effectively as he wanted to and ended up re redshirting for the year. It was a tough year for him. Physically, it was tough. Emotionally, it was tough. At one point, some of his relatives tried to talk him into transferring. Vance considered it and decided, no, he was going to stay for his senior year at CU. 
The school is really doing well with all of its fall sports. All five sports programs are nationally ranked. Football, men's cross country, women's volleyball, another win over Oklahoma over the weekend, men's golf, and women's cross country. It's quite a feat. Mm -hmm. Only team in the nation to have all, four, all of its fall sports programs ranked. Third and 17. Vance wants to throw. Looking for T.J. Cunningham. He overthrows not only Cunningham, but the coverage. Scott Harmon was there, just in case. Jason Gilden with a little pressure on Vance Joseph. And Mitch Berger is in the punt. He's had a pretty good day, considering he's doing all this with a broken hand. Hard to field those snaps, 42-yard average. Better than he's been doing during the course of the season. Really kind of a disappointing year for Mitch Berger. Came in as a preseason All Big Eight player, preseason All American in some publications. Fielded by Harmon at his own 46. And he's hit hard at the CU 45 yard line. John Knutson really gave a bang. Two forty five to go. See you leading at thirty one fourteen. And Oklahoma State with the ball at the CU forty four. Wilson hands it off. And that's Joe Jefferson with a gain of four yards, maybe five. This game's well in hand, but I th think the coaches for Colorado would be a little bit disappointed if, if Oklahoma State would it be able to put together another drive, and they don't have far to go and get another score on the board. Wilson going deep again. This time it's intercepted. Intercepted by Maurice Sanriquez, the freshman red shirt cornerback out of Houston, Texas. That's his second interception of the year. His first one came on his first play from scrimmage in college against Texas. Oh, he usually plays the nickel back, and when he comes in, often plays the corner position where he is right here, replacing Simmons, and it looks like he runs the pattern for Denson. And as you might expect, Colorado's not going to let any long completions get behind them. So Henriquez makes the nice play just by playing kind of a deep third there. Oklahoma State has no timeouts left, so realistically, CU could run four or five running plays, and the clock will expire. This is James Hill on running play number one. <laughs> One more time, let's run through the Big Eight scores. Look at this. Almost a shocker in Kansas. The Jayhawks tried a two-point conversion to win it and failed, so they lose by one to Nebraska. Kansas State was upset by Iowa State. That one in Ames, 27-23. And Oklahoma beating Missouri, 42-23. Second and seven. Hill again. I don't know about you, but I'm a little disappointed almost about Kansas State losing. Uh, Why is that? I don't know. I just, uh, you kind of, I, I was pulling for a team like that. Bill Snyder's really turned that program around. Just a few years ago, they were heralded as the worst football program in the nation. And I just think it was good for the Big Eight, what Bill Snyder's been able to accomplish there, and, and really bring that team not only back to respectability, but back to the upper echelon of the Big Eight. Uh, you have a good point. It might have cost them a, a New Year's Day game, which uh -huh. would have meant a lot more money for everybody in the Big Eight because sure. they all split that money up. But on the other hand, if you're a CU booster, it knocks Kansas State out of a second place tie with you, and you move into second place. Yeah, but as Mark pointed out, maybe that's not so good either because you want to go to the Aloha Bowl. <laughs> Brings up fourth down for CU, and the Buffs will punt for their last time today. Clock still running, under 25 seconds to go. Yeah, but the play clock's not running. The play clock's at zero. What is that? 
Is that because they do not have to snap this, possibly? Yeah, they don't. Jim, another question I don't have the answer to. <laughs> they don't have to snap it. <laughs> You're right. Well, time run out. You heard the cannon. And the final from Stillwater, CU 31, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. 14, the two coaches shake hands at midfield. The Buffs up their record. Overall, 5-3-1. And, and in the Big 8, 3-1-1. One, one. While Oklahoma State falls to 3-6 and six overall. And the losing continues here in Stillwater. The Cowboys, 0-5 in conference, a five-game losing streak. Well, that man's taken a little bit of heat over the last week, as we mentioned earlier, from the Nebraska loss. And you know, when we talked to him yesterday, Bill McCartney said, well, I get paid to take the heat. I should take the heat. I'm the head coach of this football program, and I accept that. But now he's got to be a little happier, probably will not be uh, under the scrutiny as much this week with a big win. CU Buffs back on track with two games to go. Staring at a possible 7-3 and 1 finish, which would get them into a decent bowl game. Mm -hmm. Probably not New Year's Day, but a decent game. Next week, the Buffs have Kansas. That's a home game for the Buffs. Then they finish up with Iowa State in Ames. Now let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Mark? I think if you had to pick a star of the game, it'd be this guy right here, number nine, Charles Johnson. C.J., heck of a ball game. I tell you, I think the best play might have been when you stole the ball from the Oklahoma State guy that intercepted the pass down here. Um, that's that play is funny because I was talking about that play earlier this week with my girlfriend because she said, why didn't you intercept the ball? And I described that play the exact way it happened, but I didn't think it was ever going to happen. I just knew you can do it before. But it was like, I don't understand. People are beginning to expect that much out of it. Not only do you have to catch touchdown passes, you have to intercept and steal balls from the opposition. Yeah, do what you have to do. I'm only here for two reasons. <laughs> the clown and half a... <laughs> Your thoughts, Kansas State loses today, so now you guys are in second place alone, probably in line for the Hancock Bowl, not the Aloha Bowl. Uh, that's true. And, um, you never know what can happen because Nebraska really beat Kansas. I don't know how, what happened there, but um, we could have been back in the bowl, almost an orange bowl, but we're not. But um, we, we're on the right track now, back in the win column. Now we got two more to go and finish the season off. All right, CJ, congratulations. Thanks. Charles Johnson, a great day today as the Buffs get back on the winning track with a victory over Oklahoma State. Last back up to you. We've seen some phenomenal catches from that young man today. Two more. We'll come right back and wrap things up in Stillwater. <laughs> 